The NHL on ABC Sports, brought to you by Dodge, the official vehicles of the NHL. Dodge, different. Bud Light, the proud supporter of the NHL. And MasterCard, official card of the NHL and fan of the toughest players on the planet. Full house at the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Rangers, Devils, NHL on ABC, and we are underway. Ron Lowe decided I'm going for the snarl quotient at the start. Adam Graves, Sandy McCarthy, and Michael York up front. Dale Purinton and Brian Leach in back. The Devils answer with Sergei Nemchinov, Jim McKenzie, Jay Pandall for the forwards. Colin White and Sean O'Donnell working back on defense, and O'Donnell slipped it on to Nemchinov, then on to McKenzie, locked up there by Purinton. Puck to the corner, and Leach is hit. Along comes Nemchinov. The puck trickled to the front, but is grabbed off by Sandy McCarthy. Nice outlet pass for Michael York. Regathered by Adam Graves and tucks back in, but Colin White will play it across. Just deflected away by Radek Dvorak and walked on by Bobby Holik. That drive is turned aside by Guy Hebert. Big drive by John Madden, and Hebert got that one too. I think Ronnie Lowe just wanted to make sure they had some energy at the start. That's why Big Sandy McCarthy got out there, threw a great hit on Colin White out of the camera, but uh, it was a bone crusher, I'll guarantee you. Wolf White up for sure. The fifth and final match between these two. The last one was March 21st. It was a 4-0 victory for New Jersey. 93 minutes in penalties. Four sets of fisticuffs in the course of the evening. The Rangers did not go quietly. Randy McKay to the back, knocked away from Niedermeyer, along now for Bobby Holy. Stepping by and outletting it back down the ice. Manny Malhotra, and it'll go for an icing that is waved off. A minute and a half gone here in the first period. Ken Danico matched up with Scott Niedermeyer on defense for New Jersey. Niedermeyer walled by Michael Groshek. He's working with Jan Holovich. And also out on that line is the center, as is the custom, Peter Nedved. On back now for Mike Motto, who popped it out of play at the Rangers bench. Well, the third man on our crew. Let's bring in Joe Micheletti. Okay, Mike, thanks very much. You know, last Saturday we did the game, the Rangers in Detroit at Madison Square Garden. The Rangers were embarrassed in that game, 6-0. Ron Lowe, the Ranger coach, thought that it felt that his team had quit on the play. So Sunday morning he had a video session with them to prove his point. Since then, they have played three games and have played this physical in the last three games that they have played all season long, expect this one to be a very physical game. And for Larry Robinson, this game scares him. Rangers out of the playoffs and that magical 23 that you talked about at the top. Mike? This is the last meeting, as mentioned, so it would be 24 if the Devils win or it would be broken for next season and a fresh start if it's the Rangers. That shot went off Dale Purins in a scorcher by Stevens. Meanwhile, it's kept alive by Rafalski. Turned along now for Peter Sikora. Arnett in front. Cross on a good defensive challenge that time was Kim Janssen on defense for the Rangers. Sikora's pass must be played at center by Jason Arnett. Boy, a perfect cycling feed for that line, but they couldn't connect that time. Well, people that don't get to see New Jersey play a lot, uh, you're, you're really losing out because they do have one of the best lines in hockey. I was talking about that in the open with Sikora, Elias, and Arnett. Look at that, no touch, one, uh, no look, one touch pass to Elias in the slot. No one would pick him up. Boy, that's really close to being a one nothing game. Right through Johansson's legs. He's got to stay in front and pick up uh, Eliash in that situation. Right there, you can see one of New York's problems. They're not great defensively in their own zone. Usually, uh, Eliash puts that puck away. But you're looking at three of the best players in the NHL and maybe, maybe the best line in the NHL. What is interesting is to see them come out of the locker room on off days, even though they're in civilian clothes, just coming from the locker room and watching some of the other guys. They will sit as a line at the bench. And they're in proper order, left, center, and right. <laughs> Arnett is in the middle, and they're just sitting up in the stands sometimes. They, they like each other. They're like playing with each other. They're all young. Uh, they, they all like the same interests, and they're on a great hockey club. doesn't lose very much. Life is good for those three guys. Colin White flipped one along, skipped off of Mogilny, brought ahead by Scott Gomez. And Gomez trickled one on that's grabbed off, thrown back out by Peter Smrek. Big drive by Sandy McCarthy. That went wide and tumbling to the ice, Colin White. McCarthy there for another shot. Brodeur the save. Rebound scrambled for and tucked away to the corner by Colin Forbes, but gotten by White. Sandy McCarthy's had four great hits already, and it's four minutes into the game. And we get a stoppage of play and an interference call coming up, and I believe this one's on New Jersey. 
No, nope, it is going to be McCarthy instead. Yeah, but I'll tell you, Mike, the coach does not mind that at all because he's went out there, he set the tone, uh, he's running into people, White's already uh, been hit twice. Uh, the guys on that bench, the New York bench, must pick up on this. So Sandy McCarthy's doing his job early. Ten goals, ten assists. This guy has been everything the New York Rangers hoped they would be when they went out and got him this summer. He's been great. Devils in the season are second best in power play, and they're five for 22 against New York. Second best power play in the NHL. Now watch right here. McCarthy comes in. Poor little Breland just gets swatted like a fly out from the front of the net. This one thrown back down. Rafalski and Arnett will work the points on the power play. Up front, Bobby Holik for the bulk in Sikora and Eliash as well as it's walked ahead by Rafalski. Mark Messier helping to kill this off for the Rangers as Eliash hands it on back to Arnett. Around now for Bobby Holik. Away from Leach, gave it on back that's fed for Arnett. Tapped on by Rafalski to Sikora. Peter Sikora back to Rafalski. Fires, deflected in front and it skipped wide as Dvorak got a piece of it. Worked to the back now, Rapolsky. Watched by Messier, and that one slowed down by Messier. Puck kept alive by the Devils. Nice play by Arnett. Back on now for Sikora. Gives on to Elias. Rapolsky in the narrow slot. Back in the deep slot is Arnett. The pass won't come to him, and it's brought back ahead now by Dvorak working the outside. He's got Messier. Got it to him, but he couldn't get a good shot away. Defended by Rapolsky. Good opportunity for the Rangers as they broke out. Right Rangers, now. Rangers do not have great penalty killing. It's the second worst in the NHL, but they do score a lot of shorthanded goals. They've already scored 14 this year, so they will take chances when they do get a turnover like that, especially a guy like Messi who can really read that play well. Yeah, good point. In the two-game series, the latter part of this week against the Islanders, they killed off 17 of 18, so they're better. Niedermeyer with a shot that went wide. But overall on the season, it's been a major disappointment. Gomez handed along now for Alexander Mogilny. Flipped one that banked around behind. Mogilny looking for 40 goals this year. Here is Gomez. On to the back. Stevens to Niedermeyer. Twisted around to Gomez. The battle. Mogilny fed one in front. A patented play. They try to work with Randy McKay, who's got 11 power play goals. Now Mogilny to the outside. Got it on to Niedermeyer. Turned it on to Gomez again. Gomez with a drive and a save and a cover made by Abair. Although New Jersey has two different sets on the power play, they basically run the same system. They put a big horse in front of the net, either Holik or Randy McKay, and the jobs are to get it back to the point so guys like Niedermeyer or Arnett shoot the puck. And you've also got a great puck handler on there with Gomez or Elias. Now watch right here. That's Randy McKay. That's uh, Kim Johnson right there. Two hands on the stick, Kim. You learn that when you're eight years old, man. Especially when a guy like Randy McKay is in front of there. I would hold on to that really tough. What a great year this guy's having. Leadership, toughness. Had a bunch of teeth knocked out. He's got a big zipper over his eye. 21 goals, 18 assists, 50 points. Will fight anybody in the NHL. Physical presence and a leader in the room. He has his name on the Stanley Cup as well as on the Calder Cup. Names are on the Calder Cup now. Here is Gomez dealing it back in. It's on now for McGillney. Back to Gomez once more. Gomez a shot. Save. Rebound jammed around behind. Hebert came up with another strong save as it's McGillney cycling to Gomez with the penalty box empty. Flipped along, but through Breland. Mogilny stepped to that one, left behind by Michael York for him, and Mogilny able to pivot away. Alexander Mogilny with 39 goals this year. Mogilny swaggering, working it on now for Gomez. Gomez tried to drop it on for Breland, but it's knocked away by Dale Purinton, and he got it as far as center. You just see the depths of the New Jersey Devils. They just continue to throw forward that. Every line moves it. Mogilny couldn't get a shot away, and it's cleared back out. And they play pretty much four lines, which helps, too, at playoff time because not everyone is sagging because of overuse. Well, there's Sean O'Donnell played for me in L.A., a great addition for the New Jersey Devils, one of the reasons they're one of the best defensive teams in the NHL. Marty Brodeur, look at these numbers. He's going for 40 wins again. If he gets it today, he'll be the one of three goalies that have won 40 uh, games three years uh, in a row. Uh, Guy Bear just wants to finish on a positive note. It's been a disastrous year for Guy coming over from the Ducks. He just wants something positive to build on this summer. If you build a perfect goaltender, I've said this before, it would look just like Marty. Great size, great puck handling ability, passes the puck better than most defense in the NHL, and what's even more important, he can stop it. Here's Danico controlling this one and then flipping one that's knocked down and played back away from Malhotra. The other two goaltenders to have 340 win seasons are late legends, Terry Sawchuk and Jacques Plant. McKay moving in, but is wedged off neatly by the defense. And so the Rangers can shift it back out. Pass went skipping across behind Messier, but on now for Mike Motto. 
fed it to the back. It's worked on to Messier. He's got a man in front, Dvorak, but that blocked the side by Brodeur. Messier working the outside again, but Randy McKay just knifes it back out. Fed on through, and McKay can walk it ahead. Hands on to Bobby Holik. Holik just protects and fed on for Danico, and a shot! And that wound up hitting a bear who had good position. That's what they always say when it hits you, right? Yeah, bear is not going to see a lot of pucks clean tonight when you play New Jersey. They always got a pair of black pants in your face right in front of that net. Here comes John Madden, but the play was offside. Well, Ron Lowe wanted to be much more physical today. He wanted the New York Rangers to show up, and McCarthy came out early and did that. Colin White was flattened once. He went back after his buddy McCarthy. Quite a steadying influence on these Devils, and he keeps them loose, too. Larry Robinson, we were talking to him earlier in the week, and asked if, if he was a, sort of a cut-up when he played in the locker room. And he said, yeah, I was, because we'll look down there in games that are very close or games that are lopsided and he will be laughing at something. You've got to have uh, an 82 game season in the NHL. You've got to have fun. It can't be work every day and Larry is a good mixture of, uh, of pushing you and uh, patting you on the back. He was a great addition to this team when he came over last year when Robbie Fatorik was fired. They did not practice well yesterday. He was not happy with the way they practiced so he uh, gave him a little bit of a spanking and it looks like they responded pretty well. They did some jump early. Okay, coach. Now, which do you consider more important, practice before the game or the game day skate? Uh, practice, game day skate. He got his message through yesterday at the, at the practice. This morning they had jump uh, or uh, the game day skate. You can tell if they've listened to him. Well, next Saturday, the last weekend of the regular season and three terrific matchups on ABC. Abs and Red Wings, Penguins and Flyers. And the Dallas Stars and the San Jose Sharks. 3 Eastern, noon Pacific on ABC. Next Saturday, check your local listings for regional action. Well, Larry doesn't have a lot of problems, but one of his problems and one of his worries is to make sure these guys continue to play well going into the playoffs. That's why they were so good last year. They were playing great going into the playoffs. That's every coach's dream. Not how you start a season, Doc. It's how you finish it. So that would be another reason why he was concerned with yesterday's Very much. practice being bad. They're, they're perfectionists here. Forbes a shot and a great stop by Brodeur. Good wrister by Forbes. They won't accept being average here in New Jersey, and that's why they're a Stanley Cup contender every year. Jim McKenzie flies this one back in, and it's Leach after it. Ryan Leach trying to shake McKenzie's checking, kicked it along to Sandy McCarthy, and that's flipped back as far as White. 11.50 gone first period, four shots for New Jersey, two for the Rangers. It is Leach stepping ahead, and then on back to McCarthy. I have a feeling this snarl unit here that started the game is going to see a lot of ice time for the Rangers today. They should. The game against Detroit on Saturday, that 6 nothing game that Ronnie Lowe was so upset about, which he should have been, uh, that line was the best line for New York. Mo Gilney a shot, deflected by Motto. Valerie Kamensky left it behind, moved to get it, and it was knifed away from him, back onto Gomez. Followed up by Kamensky again, dueling there with Breland, who got it loose onto Gomez. Scott Gomez pivoting through one in front. It's off Breland, but he regathered. Missed for Gomez, but it's kept alive by Danico. Jersey cycles the puck so well. That means they bring it up the wall. They don't like what they see. They throw it back down and do it all over again until they have a goal scoring chance. They do it excellent. Even the goal scorers and the talented guys do it. Here's Mogilny trying to fight loose. Went to his knees. Devils fans wanted a penalty. It's brought back out now and thrown back down the ice by Mike Motto. There'll be an icing touch-up, and the scoreboard clock will freeze. 10.44 left in the first. Scoreless, here's Joe. Okay, Mike, part of the problem that the New York Rangers face when they play the Devils is a very young, inexperienced defensive core. And with Brian Leach, he is the veteran, of course, and he is the one player that the Devils are going to have to watch. But when you look at those other defensemen for the Rangers, they're very, very young. Four defensemen are rookies this year. A fifth is in just his second year. That leaves Brian Leach as the player with all the experience. Because of that, Ron Lowe has tried to get this team to play more defensive, to get five players back in their own zone to help out around the net. Well, Mike Motto was named to the all-rookie team in the American Hockey League this past Thursday. So just two days ago, he'll rejoin his team in Hartford at the end of the regular season in time for the playoffs. The American League season coincides with the NHL, so their playoffs begin the same week. And that's what the Rangers must sell here. They've got to sell future. They've got to sell young stars. Now, Holtz is getting a lot of ice time. Model is going to be a good NHL defense. And Janssen is young. Kochuk young. Uh, Schmeck's young. So that's what they've got to sell to the people, that they are on the right page and they're doing things right. And there is some light at the end of this tunnel. 
Well, Klocek is 20. That man, Malhotra, is 20. Smrek is 22. Motto is 22. Got a great kid in Calgary with the Hitman, Calgary Hitman, WHL, uh, Pavel Brendel, great goal scorer, Jamie Lundmark uh, with Seattle, uh, a, a great young player in junior hockey. So uh, there is some uh, light there, as I mentioned, but <laughs> there's a lot of darkness, too, right here. Franchise record for losses in one season is 44. Uh, if they don't pick it up and change, they're going to break that record. And that's a record you don't like to break. There's certain records you like, there's certain records you don't like. You don't like that one. You see Jan Holovic, who comes into this contest this afternoon with 28 goals. There is a 29 goal scorer on this unit, too. Picked up four the other night at Long Island. Radic Dvorak. Puck drop back now. Eliasha's shot, saved, made by Ebert. Dvorak with four goals in the game against Long Island. The last time that four goals were scored by a Ranger were against New Jersey when Mark Messier did it. Four Czech players scored all, or the Czech players scored all six goals in that Islander game. Nedved got one and uh, uh, Halavi got one, as you mentioned. So there, there is some uh, young forwards on that Ranger team that are getting the job done this season. That's the point. They are the younger ones. Here's one fed just by Nedved and wide of the cage, guarded by Martin Brodeur. A giveaway, though, and a shot by Groshek was snuffed out by Scott Stevens. Now here's Nedved working the wall again, jostled off by Arnett. Brodeur able to shuttle it along for Stevens, and Stevens just outlets away from Sakura. Nine and a quarter minutes to go as of right now. Time remaining in the first period. Neither team has scored. Five shots to two, New Jersey. Mackenzie a shot. Kicked back out by Hebert. And Nemchinov, the ex-Ranger, could not get one to the front. Jab back out again on the backhand by Nedved. So Niedermeyer, Rangers caught in the midst of a change. Pandolfo with a wrist shot, and it's held by Hebert. Play halted here at the Meadowlands. Eight total shots, and none of them have gone in in this Rangers Devils battle. <laughs> Offensive zone faceoff for New Jersey is one to the point to Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer's wrister went flapping over the top of the net, and it is Janssen turning it along now to Sandy McCarthy. Laid it back across for the carry on and drop in by Thomas Blocek that spiked to the glass by Brodeur. Turn behind by Janssen. Adam Graves sealed up there by Nemchinov. Forbes couldn't take it. The battle continues. Graves able to spin away. Close quarters along to Janssen. Fanned on a shot because of the checking of Nemchinov. So it is dumped on now by Danico. They try to work it as far as center and do. Jersey is very fundamentally good uh, defensively. They always keep uh, themselves between the puck and the net. So if there is a breakdown, the player, the offensive player, has to go through them to get to Marty. Very good fundamentally. Along with Barry Melrose and Joe Micheletti, Mike Emmerich from the Meadowlands, where this afternoon the Devils and New York Rangers are playing. Gomez moves in, got it on for a try in front by Gomez on a pass from Breland that went off his stick wide. Now on back to Colin White for a shot. That one cut off. Brought back ahead now for the pass from Motto. And Motto worked it on, but it was away from Ulmer and sent back out for Gomez. Well, the Devils have missed two great chances. Elias and Gomez will see that comes back and haunts them if the Rangers can get some pressure on them here. Here's Kamensky moving in. Kamensky fed one in front, and Colin White swept it away. Gomez gets as far as center. Mogilny tried to return it to him. Stepping by is Gomez to Mogilny. No whistle yet. They still poke away with their sticks. It's kicked back over by Mogilny to Gomez. Gomez works it to the point. Wide a drive. Save made by Hebert. Oh, oh, my. Worked ahead now, and it went off Kaminsky's stick. Battled for in the corner. Kaminsky took a little lumber from Colin White. Freeland dumped it back on, and it's skipped back into the Rangers' end. I said they missed two glorious chances. I should have said they missed six glorious chances. They had four in that little scramble in front of the net there. Ahead comes Messier, fed it across, but it's grabbed off by the Devils. They want an odd man rush. They'll not get it this time, but the puck to Bobby Holik. Holik is shot, and it's held by Hebert. The Devils pounding away on him, but they can't get it past him. Similar to a Ranger goalie of the past. John Saunders, John Davidson. Well, this is the Dodge different update. I am next to a Ranger goalie of the past. You can point out that Joseph Stumpel gets the first goal for L.A. Power play goal through the young goaltender. Avisher 1-0 at the time for the Kings. And here they are shorthanded. Seconds later, Paul Fee with his fourth shorthanded goal of the season. 
He has been great for the Kings down the stretch. Great start for the Kings against the Avalanche, chasing Phoenix right now. The uh, Ranger goalkeeper I was thinking of was Glenn Hanlon. I was thinking of Eddie Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, J.D. <laughs> <laughs> Niedermeyer turning it around behind, and Guy Bear, who has been splendid in this contest, gets back into his goal crease. McKay caught a high stick, apparently, but it is Leach. And Leach lobs it on back. Danico and Niedermeyer, the defense. Niedermeyer able to punch it around behind. Ken Danico playing in his 106th game against the New York Rangers today as a devil. Watches this play develop. Malhotra's pass went off Danico, and it's brought on by McKay. Off of Madden, walked on by Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer to the back. Danico a shot and it went just wide. Loaded to the back again. Niedermeyer walks it on. Gets to Danico. Another shot and that one knocked down. Scramble for it. Randy McKay trying to get a pass to the front and is wedged off by Leach. Pinching in deep is Danico. Jammed it off the skate of Dale Purinton. Fired around now for Messier to take. Rangers shift to offense. Outshot 10-2 with 5.40 left in the first. Now, those aren't 10 shots from far out, Doc. Six of them are from right in the crease, I'm sure of it. And the two of the great chances weren't counted as shots in that because they uh, didn't hit the net and hit the goalie on the way through. Boy, there were, that was one sequence that lasted for about a half minute. You kept expecting a whistle oh, to fall, but the puck continued in play. Here's Sikora, reefed to the corner boards in glass. Sikora moves right back again. Thomas Klocek put the hit on him. Gelios doing the battle this time, and he walks away. Gets it to the back. White with a drive. Knocked down in front as it went off Bear. Brought back out by Forbes and handed to Sandy McCarthy. The Devils are winning all the battles in both ends of the ring right now. Rangers got to sold them up. They're flying. Here is Arnett pivoting under five minutes to go. So, Colin White, still classified as a rookie, though he's playing his 99th NHL game today. Worked ahead and off of O'Donnell. White able to pivot back with it and pass one that's away from Jim McKenzie. Klochek back on this one. Icing is called. So the Devils have pounded 11 shots to two. No score. A couple more flurries like that, and Guy Bear is going to be like the goalie on slap shot in between periods. Watch right here. Here's the give and go again. That's not a shot on net because he misses it. Southwest Airline goal cam. Now look at this flurry. Makes a great save coming across. One chance, two chances, three chances, four chances. Puck still lose. Five chances. Six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Eleven to two shots. Off the faceoff, puck played around by Mogilny. Halavich darts after that one. Halavich tried to tuck a pass in front, but it was off the back of the net. Then he wanted to read one for Nedved, but in the way was Stevens. Stevens able to spin a pass ahead to Nemchinov. Under four and a half to go in the period, and the pass deflected away from Mogilny. Set up by the defense for a pass along to Lovich. Rafalski kept it, and that one bounced off of Smrek. Now Nemchinov fed one out for Mogilny. Couldn't get a good shot away. It was spiked away by Guy Bear. Dropped on back now for Smrek again. And the youngster on defense just lobs it back to the veteran, Scott Stevens. Well, the Rangers are just trying to survive right now. They're just dumping out of their zone. They're not really moving, or they're trying to make plays at all. They just don't want the Devils to have the puck. Stevens got in the way of that play, but here's Lovich moving in, though the play was offside. Let's take a look at the Bud Light plus minus leaders. They come from two, two teams. teams. <laughs> and if you were to go beyond Stevens, you would still see two, two teams. teams. Great players. Joe Sackick, I think, is going to get MVP this year. Been fantastic. But look at the next group. Elias, plus 39. Colin White, a young defenseman, a rookie defenseman, plus 35. One of the reasons he's playing so good defensively because he gets to watch uh, Stevens play every night. I think that's very important for those young defensemen, like Rafalski, who is a sophomore, and like White, who is a rookie. So it's not only the Rangers that got young talent. The Devils got tons of it, too. This one deflected back in. Pandolfo after that. Leach chased down by Pandolfo. Pandolfo able to come up with it. Former Boston University star hands on to Scott Gomez trying to shake a couple of Rangers. Homer all over him and down to get it is Gomez again. Then to Jim McKenzie. McKenzie circles. A shot by Danico went wide. Niedermeyer poked it back on the backhand hoping for Gomez. Jousted out of the way though by Big Dale Curran. How come the Devils come out with every loose puck and every scramble? It's odd how it's unfolded, isn't it? <laughs> oh, man. Guy Bear, I think, has noticed the same thing. <laughs> Here is Kamensky moving in, eyed up by Niedermeyer. Kamensky trying to get by, no sale there. I think he should mention it in between periods too, Mike. You think he will? Say, hey guys, let's work a little harder in our own zone, huh? 
Who was the most animated goaltender you ever knew? Mike Palmer's here, no doubt about it. Messier trips up Bobby Holik, a power play coming up for New Jersey. Let's check in with our tandem, Mr. Saunders and Davidson. The respect you show, J.D., is just wonderful. St. Louis against Pittsburgh. Penguins didn't have a shot on goal until here. Power play goal. Lemieux gets the assist. Ferenc is third. Pittsburgh 1-0. Again, their first shot on goal. It gets tied up, though. Look at the kid, Corso, the rookie behind the net, working on Kasparaitis. The puck ricochets in. He scores his ninth. Tied at one apiece. About seven minutes left. Mario tells his story between periods. John and John will be in the studio. Red Wings and Flyers highlights as well. I saw Mario Tuesday night. I did the Pittsburgh Buffalo game. He was awesome. He's playing great hockey, great two-way hockey. He's very, very committed to defense right now. They went to a left-wing lock system in Pittsburgh, and they're getting great goaltending from Edward. Rafalski tried to shake one in front. Rafalski again, and then on to Sakura. Rafalski tucked it across. Arnett on the power play with a shot kicked out by Abair and grabbed and brought back ahead by Dvorak. Dvorak took some lumber, tries to step through the defense. That didn't work. Devils are able to shift it back out. Holik rink wide back across to Sakura. Fakes the drive with Eliash curling toward the front. Now they set it up. Eliash behind. Holik out in front. A Ranger has lost his stick. Puck worked to the back. Rafalski shakes it over to Eliash. Dealt it on into Sakura. Then to the back, Rafalski. Harness one timer. Deflected it, went wide. Janssen after that, but Elias swept it along. Janssen prevailed, but it couldn't be gotten past Arnett, who flung one into the glove of Hebert, and he just drops it back into play and clears it back down. Great shot blocked by Dvorak on that uh, shot from Arnett. Zakora swept it on back. Leach goes to get that. Rangers down to the last minute on their penalty kill, and it's dealt back into the Devil's End, where Martin Brodeur will come out to get it. The Devils have this play on their power play, where Brodeur comes out, plays the puck up to Arnett, it it's, looks for a breakaway. I've seen it work about 11 times this year. It's unbelievable. If you're penalty killing, it just ticks you right off. Because if you fall asleep up for a minute, they got a breakaway going the other way against you. Offside is called. Well, Sunday, April 8th on ABC, the Infinity Grand Prix of Miami, live at 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific time. The Indy Racing League comes to you from South Florida as the countdown continues to the Indianapolis 500. Man, I'd like to coach that team. <laughs> Look at that. John Madden, 22 goals. Pendolfo, great two-way player. McKenzie gives you muscle. Breland, 22 goals. Holy man. They got everything. It was interesting. The Devils had their vote by the players for various awards this week, and Breland was named the unsung hero. Randy McKay, the player's player. And on the heels of that effort that he made in Tampa Bay, I could see why. Here's Gomez. The voting was probably taken before then. Gomez gave it up. Graves cleared it back down. Randy might have threatened a few guys for their votes, too, and I, and I think that would have done it. <laughs> Randy McKay tells me he wants my vote. He gets my vote. Ahead now comes Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer with a pass. McKay with it. Fires, and that deflected wide. Gomez moving back to get it. Turned it along now for Mogilny. Mogilny dropped it off to Scott Stevens. Tried again for Gomez, but it's cleared back down. They're so confident with the puck. They try things that other players won't try just to successfully have how confident they are. Here's Niedermeyer bringing it on. A change for the Devils. Nemchinov has just stepped out. Dropped on back. Penalty time is up. A drop pass on to Malhotra in front of Borak. And a half-speeder that went into the glove of Brodeur. Well, what the Rangers are hoping that... Uh... Marty Brodeur hasn't seen many pucks today, and he's a little bit rusty on the ones he does see, so they bounce one in on him right here. Nice little drop pass here, Dvorak. Now, he's supposed to go to the net. Mahotra tries to throw a given goal, sort of. Bounces through, but Dvorak doesn't get enough wood on it to really test Marty Brodeur, but there's the big glove sitting there just to gobble it up. Mahotra just throws it through there. Niedermeyer doesn't get a hold of it, but it just bounces into Brodeur, who is out challenging the way Marty always does. Big goaltender. What a dimension, uh, as you see, Martin Brodeur that McKay on Tuesday lost two teeth, took 10 stitches, had a post-game root canal, had a goal, an assist, and a plus three. That's a Melrose type of player. Good shot by Leach, found its way all the way to Brodeur, and play a stop, and you did coach him. I did coach Randy, he was one of my favorite players. Uh, this guy's just a treasure to coach. He gives you his heart and soul every night, he'll fight everybody. Look at that big zipper right there, folks. Nice little zipper right there. That's not gonna bother this guy. He's got great teeth now. I saw him before, his modeling career is intact. <laughs> Everything looks good. Leach a shot. Oh, it hit the goal post. Out in 
loose and turned back across to Nemtinov. Almost one nothing Rangers. Pandolfo a drive, grabbed by Bear, and sent behind for Dale Purinton. Purinton locks up with Bobby Holik. Two pretty strong guys going after the puck. Jam to the corner and it's Nemtinov. Four seconds left. Backhander in front, chipped wide by O'Donnell. And the period will come to a close. There's a penalty called. Holding penalty. A stick hold will be assessed, and I believe it's the Rangers who will get it, but we'll have plenty of time to clarify that. Some of the action at the end of the period, and one off the post from Leach. John and John will bring you up to date on the rest. We have no score here after one. This is the Dodge Different Intermission Report. Here now, John Saunders and John Davidson. Well, it's scoreless after one period of play. Let's see, the Devils, last 23, they haven't lost to the Rangers. Rangers have lost 11 straight in Jersey. Jeez, it's really hard to figure out why <laughs> after watching that period. Well, 12-4 with the shots. New Jersey didn't finish, but I, I really was uh, impressed again with the way New Jersey played and were very aggressive uh, during the first period. Yesterday after practice, they were talked to by their coach, uh, Larry Robinson, about getting their heads back into the game and being ready for this one with the Rangers. They were ready. They just didn't score. Yeah, obviously they're getting that done. All right, we're heading towards the playoffs, and so... Pittsburgh Penguins have decided they need to play some defense. So they've thrown sort of a trap, left wing lock in there, facing St. Louis today. So this is their first shot from Ferentz. A uh, blast that was from the blue line, a power play goal. Mario Lemieux did get an assist on the play, along with Straka. No traffic, but a deflection. Ooh. See that top corner off the defender's stick? That's tough for the goaltender. I know. I <laughs> you hate when guys do that to you. St. Louis comes right back. The rookie Corso gets his ninth goal. He's developing into one of the best centermen on that hockey club. Big and strong. Kasparaitis couldn't deal with him, and we're tied at one. Blues right now in the middle of the pack in the fourth seed, and that could be pointing towards facing Edmonton, which could be tough. They're going to get Pronger back next week. All right, Detroit and Philadelphia. This one is scoreless. There's about 30 seconds remaining in the first period of play. Detroit's won four straight. The Avs and the Kings, and the Kings one point out of a playoff spot. Luke Robitaille to Joseph Stumple. A little backhander goes in. Between the arm and the body of Abisher, the young rookie goaltender, 1-0 Stumple on the power play. Here's Palfi, not long after that, shorthanded. Around Raymond Bork, through Bork, through another one, through Abisher, 2-0 in favor of the Kings. And here's the third one. Palfi's there again, through the legs of Abisher. He's having a tough time. The puck's going through him. Patrick Waugh on the bench. He's not fared well recently in Los Angeles, so he's sitting this one out. 3-0 Kings are up. We, of course, will keep you up to date. But right now, here on the Dodge Different Intermission Report, the Rangers and the Devils tied at zero. This is the Dodge Different Intermission Report. John Saunders and John Davidson. Time now for that part of our show here on ABC where we get up close and personal with the player. This time around, it's interesting because we have two players, really. We have one guy who's the owner of our team, and his best player. Well, let's talk about the best player to start with when we think about Mario Lemieux. Since he came back in December, and if you can believe this, only Pavel Bore has scored more goals than Mario. He's made a huge impact on the ice, and maybe even more off the ice. The man is the owner, yes. When he retired years ago, he was a quiet superstar. Today, he couldn't be more accommodating, and because of that, we've all been winners. Yeah, and he offers a rare perspective no other player knows anything about. Hi, I'm Mario Lemieux, center and owner of the Pittsburgh Penguins, and this is my story. The first time I was on skates, uh, I was three years old. I started back in Montreal at an outside rink, pushing a chair. And my mom told me that uh, it took me about an hour, an hour and a half to, uh, to get used to, to my balance. She used to, to get some snow from outside and just lay it on the carpet just to make believe that uh, you know, we were skating on, on real ice. We had two little goals that we made up ourselves and, and uh, a roll of tape. And we spent uh, hours playing. Anything goes. My chambre la forme d'une cage. The first uh, time I learned English was uh, when I got drafted by Pittsburgh here in 1984. It took me three to four years before I started to feel uh, a lot more comfortable. There was a uh, few screw-ups, you know, instead of saying a bowl of soup, it was a ball of soup. Instead of a massage, it was a message, you know. Like, well, Lemieux in English means the best. Mario means Mario, I guess. <laughs> 
I have four kids, three uh, beautiful daughters, and, and a great son who loves the game of hockey. And now my son Austin, he's not a physical player. He's, he's more of uh, like his dad, more of a finesse player, and he loves to stick handle and, and put the puck through his legs and all that stuff. So he's a little fancy. Now we don't bring any snow in the house. That's something that uh, my wife won't uh, won't allow. The Dodge Intermission Report on ABC. The Devils attempted 25 shots, 13 were on net, and some in this impressive flurry midway in the first, but Brian Leach hit the post. It doesn't count as one of the Rangers' four shots. We're still scoreless after one. This has been the Dodge Different Intermission Report, brought to you by Dodge, the official vehicles of the NHL, Dodge Different. The NHL on ABC will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The NHL on ABC Sports, brought to you by Original Coors. When you're an original, you do it your own way. Original Coors and IBM, taking e-business and your business to the next level. Welcome back to the Meadowlands. Second period about to start. Do you think Bear had that conversation between well, periods? I think he better have had that conversation. It's going to be a long game for him. Bear is the reason this is a 0-0 hockey game. I thought he was excellent. He had a lot of tough shots. He controlled his rebounds the best he could. Right here is a give and go. That would have been a goal, except Gomez missed the open net. Right here is a one-timer by the 39 goal scorer, McGilney. And right here again, after the one-timer, you're going to see the Devils come in and dig for the loose puck about six or seven times. So certainly they got their money's worth out of him that period for the New York Rangers. We start the second period with a Ranger penalty that was called on Dale Purinton for stick-holding at the end of period number one. So a power play for New Jersey at the outset of the second. Third power play for the Devils this afternoon. Puck fed to the point now. Jason Arnett with it. Dealt it back on to Holik. Holik looking over the traffic. At the front, Elias peels off. It comes to the back to Arnett, but it was across the line. So offside is called. Well, second period just underway. Interesting to hear from Joe Micheletti on intermission thoughts. Okay, thanks very much, Doc. You know, the Rangers felt very happy that they were able to just survive that first period, in particular because of all those young defensemen and because their penalty killing had not been very good against the Rangers this season. So they feel good that they have done that. Meanwhile, they want to get back to get some forechecking going, start controlling the puck a little bit. And as you might expect, the Devils feel great about the way they played in period number one. Mike? Boy, the Rangers attempted eight shots. Four of them got on goal. But once again, it was a total of 25 shots. Eight of them were blocked by the Rangers. Four were wide, and 13 were on net, and all stopped by Abe. And three penalties against them because they're not skating, and the Devils are. Darn it. Around behind. Bobby Holik works the outside. Elias back across to Sakura. Fires save made by Hebert, who was able to see that all the way. Well, that's because the model did a great job with Big Arnett in front of the net, keeping him to the side, screening him off so Hebert could see the puck. But, boy, they're making those passes from one side of the rink to the other. They're teeing them up. They're getting lots of time. Uh, that gives the devil forwards a chance to get to the front of the net, winning those physical battles. Guys like McKay, guys like Holik, guys like Arnott. But, again, you see the puck go from one side of the ice to the other. The devil's are doing that great. Now, watch model right here. Freeze it there, guys. Model does a great job here keeping Arnott to the side so that Guy Bear can see the shot come from the point. Has great vision on that. Any NHL goaltender, if he sees a puck clean, is going to make the save. Our goaltender in the Ranger uniform was quick, and our crew out in the truck was quick. Your lips, and they just freeze that. Uh, you just say it, and there it is. That's a smart crew in the truck. We keep them in the truck for a purpose. Mogilny threw one across the net mouth wide. I won't ask what that <laughs> Trickled back down the ice by Malhotra. Malhotra and Nedved, penalty killing for the Rangers. And in back, it is Slocek and also Kim Janssen. Again, three young players on the ice for the uh, Devils, or for the Rangers. Giveaway by Niedermeyer. Uncharacteristic, and the Rangers can fan this thing out. They're down to the last 37. As Nedved has it intercepted by Niedermeyer, moves in and fires, and that deflected up into the seats by Janssen. Well, Peter Nedved will be talked to uh, about that on the bench. You can't turn the puck over in the neutral zone when you're killing a penalty. It's got to go down the ice. As I mentioned, Guy Bear is just trying to get something positive this season, Mike. It's been a terrible year for Guy. At one time, one of the elite goaltenders in the NHL. Third NHL team. He was drafted by St. Louis. He's from Troy, New York. Uh, the Rangers picked him up on waivers. 
basically uh, the, the uh, Anaheim Mighty Ducks are trying to get rid of his salary. But uh, this guy at one time was an excellent, excellent goaltender. So uh, maybe the Rangers are hoping that he can regain that form. What you once had can often be brought back. Oftentimes it takes a goaltending consultant or a goaltending coach to get that back with you. I think Kung Fu said that, didn't he? Yeah, I think so at one time. Who did he play for? <laughs> I think a number of North American and Eastern League teams about 25 years ago. He was Here's on an Eastern team, Eastern Division team, no doubt. Indeed. Far East. <laughs> Bounce back down for Bobby Holik, tap back toward the point, but brought back out a two-on-one for the Rangers. Moving up with it is Graves, trying to get in is York, and a shot went off the glass. So it's York trying to throw into the front, but the Devils in the way of that. Penalty time is up to Purinton. He comes to the bench and is replaced. And meanwhile, it's dealt back along, but through Malhotra, brought ahead by York. Dumped to the Colin White end of the ice. Brodeur out there to sail it along, though, and unable to keep it in. Maddening possibilities when Brodeur is in goal. Well, right Breck was not able to hold. Sorry, Mike, right there you saw why he is so tough to play against. The puck was dumped in. It wasn't a great dump in. Marty just goes behind the net, stops it, throws it up the wall, and bang, you get a transition offensive chance out of a dump in. Here is White. Back along now to O'Donnell. Up the boards for Pandolfo. Hey, Pandolfo spinning and bringing it back ahead. Right up there by Leach. He just pushed it on through as the Devils probed for another opening. They found plenty in the first period. Thus far, not many shots in the second. Around to get it is Pandolfo again. Cycled it on for Nemchinov. Nemchinov wanted to get it to McKenzie, but that was foiled by Messier's hit. Messier and Nemchinov still rocking one another. Messier goes down. Nemchinov went down too. And there will be a holding of the stick call. And it will be Nemchinov who will get it. holding the stick. Well, this was vintage Messier. This is old-time Mark Messier behind the net. There being a physical presence, winning the physical battles. Nemchinov's got to hold a mess of stick right there. Mess just throws him around. You see that a lot, when boy, when he was uh, 25, 26 years old with the Edmonton Oilers. Good strength, finishes his check. Messier's got 23 goals. It's not like he's had a terrible year offensively. It's just... When the team doesn't win and you miss the playoffs, Mark Messi is one of the players that take a lot of heat for that. It'll be a collection of checks to be out on this power play. Leach will be a trigger puller on one side. Empty in 18 against New Jersey this year for the Ranger power play. Well, we can throw pretty well every stat the Rangers have against the Devils for the last four or five years and it ain't going to be pretty. No, this is not a feel-good <laughs> day statistically when we no. show you anything about New York. The only thing we can say is they're due. Here is Groshek, intercepted by Madden. Madden lifting, kept alive by Leach. Leach spun, but it's taken by Madden, moves out with Pandolfo. Madden on in with a shot that is held by Hebert, and play is stopped. The, Devil, the Devils don't score as many shorthanded goals as the New York Rangers. They've got eight, but Madden certainly is one of the reasons why they have great penalty killing. Uh, it's around 85%, which is very, very good. Not the best, but still very good. Right here, Model comes over, plays a two-on-one pretty well. Madden just jumps in there and gets his chance. Poor play at the blue line, and then he just is off to the races. But Model played it well, gave uh, Gia Bell the shooter. That's his job to stop the shot. Model's job is to make sure the pass does not go across to the other devil player. John Madden with 22 goals this year, none of them on the power play. Talk about sophomores, you got Madden, you got Gomez, and you got Rafalski. Those are three pretty good sophomores to build your team around, I would say. Rookie Colin White, great young rookie. So as we said, there's a lot of youth on the devil side also. Elias, Sakura, Arnott. John really doesn't complain about his power play time because he gets plenty of it when the other team has the power play. <laughs> Puck dealt to the back now, and here's Leach shooting. He dubbed that one, and it's cleared away by Stevens. Kept alive by Leach, though. Leach handed it back across, and it's sent back onto Nedved. Then to Leach, they play a little catch. Nedved watched by Patrick Eliash. It's rolled around to Messier. Wanted to lob it, but couldn't get position for the pass because of Stevens. Held along for Messier. Cut out and work for Peter Sikora, who's in on a partial break. Sikora with a shot. Hits the goal post. Back along Niedermeyer. And Niedermeyer will play a little four corners, but Stevens' pass is flagged down by Lovic, then lost. Stevens almost got it to Sikora again. Scott Stevens made that play happen. Niedermeyer was very aggressive on the penalty kill, created a turnover. Stevens jumped from the front of the net, picked that puck up and threw a backhand pass right up the middle. Net better shot. He scores! Peter Nedved with a power play goal. It's one to nothing. Well, 
Well, Mike, anyone that has watched a lot of hockey, you know when one team is getting all the scoring chances and they don't score, and I know Larry Robinson was thinking this after the first period, you know that team that was being beaten soundly is going to come down with one chance and they're going to put it in. That's exactly what happened. Right here, New Jersey probably gets their eighth or ninth great scoring chance, hits the post, it comes right back the other end, and Peter Nedved has got one of the best wrist shots in the NHL, and that is a rocket Beat Marty's strength right over the glove. So he beat Marty Brodeur's glove hand, and it was up in the top corner. Southwest Airline goal cam. Let's see what the goal cam sees. Just sees a rocket right over there. So Peter Nedved scores the majority of his goals on that wrist shot, and you can see why. Nedved's 32nd goal of the year, his ninth power play goal. So the first Devils penalty cost them. Another shot, score! Adam Graves, and the Rangers have gotten two goals in short order to get a lead. Well, like I said, this is par for the course for a game like this. And we talked about that, Mike, that we got the makings of a close game because of the Devils not scoring in their chances early. Rangers have had two goal, two chances, basically, in, the, in the good chances this game. And uh, they've hit the post once late in the first period. Nedved comes over, throws that wrister. And right here, you see a little bit of a turnover. Bad angle shot right there by Adam Graves, who has had no luck this year at all. Uh, better late than never, I guess, for Adam. But right there, another shot beats uh, Marty to the glove side. Tenth goal of the year for Graves. Nedved's power play goal came from Messier and Leach. And that one was at 4.32. Then a dozen seconds later, it was Graves getting his tenth. Two-nothing Rangers. Sandy McCarthy is back out with Graves. And the other winger on that line is Colin Forbes. And icing is called against the Rangers. And the faceoff will be back near Kiev. Bear. Well, That's you, another one of your guys that you yep, coached, Adam right? Graves played with him and uh, coached against him, one of my favorites. We talked about how great the guys in the truck were, so let's look at the last time the Rangers won a game against the Devils. That was a guy called Gretzky over to a guy called Robitaille. This is a guy called Messier on his first stint here with the New York Rangers, throwing it into the net. Rangers won that game 3-0, I believe. So uh, right there, Adam Graves probably was on that team that won the last game. Indeed he was. What a great competitor. Been a very tough year for Adam Graves, tough couple of years. Let's hear from Joe. Oh, we'll even, catch Joe a little bit later on. Even the Rangers mascot looks beat up this year. <laughs> on now with this is Grocheck, walled off by Scott Stevens and taken by Rafalski. Ryan Rafalski accelerates ahead for the Devils, but we get a stoppage of play and a penalty coming up. It will be Jason Arnett to the box, and the Rangers will get another power play. You know, Micah. Interference. A little frustration coming on the Devils part, but I'm Larry Robinson. I'm not that angry right now because I want to see uh, this team compete. They're down 2-0. This is good for this team. They're going to have to come back in the playoffs maybe a couple games. Uh, they're down in the game. They should be winning, but a little bit of a character check here for New Jersey. Things have went pretty well for this team the last couple months, so this isn't a bad thing for the New Jersey Devils. Joe? Hi, Mike. <laughs> it is me. This, though, happens to be Lou Lamorello. These were just delivered to the players and the management and the coaches of the Devils after winning the cup a year ago. And it's it's interesting, isn't it, that this little replica with all the coaches and the players' names on it gets delivered, what, a week or ten days before the playoffs begin? It's a beautiful cup, and it's uh, obviously the, the symbolism of this thing is very special to this group of individuals. Mike, back to you. Okay, second time that the Devils have won it in a six-year span. I heard Lou got those in October. How come he's just giving them out now? It's all a matter of timing. All of life is timing, right? Here's Danico. Checked off by Messier. Twisting with it is Lovich. It's on to the back now and tapped on by Leach. Dealt back in deep. Lovich fed. Messier is shot and Brodeur with a save. And it's cleared back out by Madden. Nedved's goal comes from Messier and Leach at 432. Graves' goal, a power, uh, power play goal to Nedved. Graves' goal was at even strength from Forbes at 444. So the... Paperwork done there. Puck jam back in, and Danico will go to get it and lift it back out. Elias, nice finesse move on to Sikora. Sikora drive, and it's deflected. Peter Sikora with that shorthanded chance earlier that he drove off the left post. Back ahead now comes Dvorak. Dvorak dealt it around behind, grabbed off by Brodeur, flipped off the back of Colin White, but then walked ahead by O'Donnell. He leads a three on two. O'Donnell has Elias breaking the pass from Sikora. 
late time play. Mike Gebert wants to win this game. Well, he had some jumps side to side. That was a great passing play again from one side of the rink to the other, and he was there waiting for the shot. 17 saves for Bear. Not even halfway through the second period, Michael York brings it on. Trying to escape White. York out in front, save Rodor. Rebound, another save, and another save, and then it's spiked away to the corner. Nearly 3-0 that time. Here's Groshek putting one in front. Oh, and it went off White and nearly found its way in. Now kept alive by the Rangers, who warmed to the task here. Leach with a shot that's blocked by Madden. The Rangers can sense that they've got the Devils on their heels right now. It's dropped right back in, and coming out to get this is Brodeur. He wants to play the puck and give it back up the glass and does to Madden. And it's thrown out of play at the Devil's bench. Let's hear from John and John. On the Dodge, different update. St. Louis and Pittsburgh, Dan Corso having a great game in second goal. He has his ninth and his tenth. There it is on the backhand. Good quick hands. After a couple of years in the minors, he's scoring some big goals for the Blues. Four goals in his last four games. Well, let's look at action at both ends right here. I talked about that passing play side to side. Comes across, toe save. That's a great, great uh, momentum keeper for the New York Rangers. And you're right, Mike. They're starting to think they can win this game and play with this New Jersey team. They almost got their third one right there. Marty saved it for the boys. And A Bear saved it for the boys in the first. The other set of boys is four oh, yeah. shots to three in favor of the Rangers here in the second, including two goals 12 seconds apart. Well, he's had 17 shots against, but they've been great scoring chances. They haven't been like long shots or uh, shots from the side. They've been point blankers, side to side, pucks, uh, breakaways. He's getting the job done. This is Alexander Mogilny trying to get by. Mogilny scores! Goal number 40, and it cuts the lead in half. Well, if I ever was going to score 40 goals, I would like to score one like this. I can guarantee you that. We've talked about the speed of the New Jersey Devils all day long. And right here, Alex Mogilny shows that he's as fast as he's ever been. First Devil to score 40 goals since Claude Lemieux in, in uh, 92. He kept the puck. Nice to see Alex get a little excited on something like that. But what a move. What speed through the neutral zone. It was like a freight train passing a tramp right here. Watch this. Young Kolchak's back, but he ain't seen nobody fly like this for a long time. Gia Bear can't stop everything. Just a great individual effort by Mogilny, who's been great for this team all year long. Waits, waits, waits. He's over there, but he can't quite get across. Great, great goal by Mogilny. Having a great season. Man, is he flying through the neutral zone. A terrific passer and a hitter. And those were two things that I hadn't thought about no, Mogilny no, no, no. as before I got a chance to see him. He competes harder than people give him credit for. That's always been a knock on Alex. He's sort of a different cat, but he's a real competitive guy. Here comes Breland moving in. Sergey Breland puts it in front and defended out of the way was McKay by Purinton. A drive! Getting a piece of that A bear. I think he hurt himself. Spun back around the boards. He got up rather slowly after doing the splits. Now pivoting with this is Bobby Holik. Holik with a shot. A bear the stop. Rebound. It's up for grabs, but filtered back out by the Rangers. And it's Groshek tucking it back across. Don't forget, he's just coming back from an injury not that long ago. Gia a bear leg injury. So. We'll take a look at him and see if he is hurt. That was in Philadelphia just a couple of weeks ago. This one dropped back in, and it's Rafalski. Ryan Rafalski slipped it on off of Holik, jabbed loose and taken by Groshek. Groshek weaving in the fallen bodies, gives it across for Motto, and a shot cut off by Stevens, steered back out for Bobby Holik. Holik going to work now on Smrek. Pivots, picks up reinforcements from the bench. It's Breland giving to the back. Niedermeyer unable to hold it back in. They circle back so well and hit the guy coming late. They obviously work on that in practice because they've done it about five times today already. This is Danico back on to Nemchinov. Moving up with Pandolfo and McKenzie. The pass blocked and then gotten back out on a poke to center. Danico retreats to play this. Away from Ulmer. And it's walked ahead by Niedermeyer. Jam back across for the turn and the take by Nemchinov. The bear seems to be moving well in the net, but he hasn't had a shot yet since he appeared to be hurt. Here's McKenzie. Drive. Save, Hebert. Rebound stoked off. Danico's shot. Oh, and that glanced off Hebert's glove and cracked off the glass. Now Niedermeyer working with it. Scott Niedermeyer dealt it back in. Nemchinov there. Walled and effectively done by Smrek. Meanwhile, the battle continues, and McKenzie trying to pull his way through camp. Pandolfo on the outside to Nemchinov. Nemchinov turned it back around. Motto and McKenzie resume their battle, and Nemchinov is able to get there, too. Now spinning with it is McKenzie, but it's not from him, and so the Devils will drop back. 
Devils hockey down low, cycle, 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 and then they get a chance to take it to the net hard. Three shots in a row by the Devils. Puck cleared out of play into the penalty box, and we are stuck. Mike, I told you this would be a good test for New Jersey. They needed to be tested by the range. It didn't look like that was going to happen. Well, Gilney has met the challenge with a great individual effort. Welcome back to New Jersey. The Rangers took a 2-0 lead. The Devils have come back to score to get to within one. And that man right there has been terrific in this game, Guy Bear. Their head coach, Ron Lowe, told me before the game the only question mark for him was whether a Bear was going to play because he's had a groin problem that's bothered him all week long. It's been tweaked. And we saw him go down, but staying in there right now. Guys? Okay, it's Eliash dropping it back in. He's faced 20. It was the 18th by Mogilny that beat him. And no shame from that. The battle, Elliott fed for Sikora, oh, and getting a piece of it, a bear, and then it flopped wide. Those three guys can find each other out there, boy. They were on an expressway, one car just a little ahead of the other, but <laughs> the puck would go from one to the other. The only blemish on Guy Bear, Mogilny's 40th. There was an assist to Brian Rapalski at 10.04. Puck tapped to the point, Niedermeyer gives on to Eliash, shovels one in front that's kicked aside by Bear. Devils have ate the Rangers up on draws in the Rangers zone. That's something that's got to change this game. See if it does, as ahead with this now comes Leach. Leach drops it back, Dvorak had it knifed away, and recoiling the Devils to bring it out, Niedermeyer. Lobbing it ahead, Eliash will be the man who will get there first, but Dale Purinton was in the way. That is substantial. Thrown behind and given up the board past Malhotra and regathered at center by Niedermeyer. Jurkin's trying to send a message to Elias. That would be a great trade off for the Rangers if Jurkin can get that guy off the ice for any length of time. Ron Lowe describes Purinton as willing tough. Here's Leach flipping one that Niedermeyer was able to knock down. Drop back to center. He has played all of the games this week since the, uh, the drop against Detroit of 6 0. Here's a save. Off the stick of Elias by Bear. Back now comes Adam Graves, who broke this. He's got the winning goal right now, feeding it back to Dvorak in a shot. Deflected down by Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer able to chip it ahead. John Madden trying to lock up a man and get it, but instead it's Motto connecting back onto McCarthy. But offside is called. What's coming up tomorrow on ABC? Well, only four-time world champion Michelle Kwan heading an all-star field of world medalists, including Todd Eldridge and Sarah Hughes in the World Figure Skating Championships Dance and Exhibition. Four Eastern, three Pacific, tomorrow on ABC Sports. Well, there is such a thing in hockey as a pretty skater, and Alex Milgilney is a pretty skater. Fedorov is like that, Burry's like that. Guys that can just fly, guys that can go sideways just as fast. Milgilney tonight, I think, is the best skater on either team. The last 40 goal scorer in New Jersey was Claude Lemieux in the 91-92 season. He eventually finished with 41. He was a good skater. He wasn't a pretty skater. No, he had, 40, <laughs> he had 41 that year, and uh, there, there were times during the season. Here's a uh, wheel by Sandy McCarthy. Spun in front and a block by Brodeur, and the rebound knocked down by the defense. Coming across now is Mogilny. Little pass ahead for O'Donnell. And Sean O'Donnell, the one-time Minnesota Wild player, gives over to Gomez for a shot. O'Donnell flipped it around behind. Madden with a centering pass, but that ricocheted back down for Colin White. And toss for Mogilny. Then Madden. Gomez had it knocked away. There were times during seasons here when it would say, well, Claude, you only have eight so far. And he would say, yeah, eight beautiful. <laughs> eight important ones. Yeah. Eight game winners. Groshek fed it across. Lava just shot. Oh, and it just slithered wide. After glancing off O'Donnell, another jam at the front of the net. And the Rangers trying to get that two-goal lead back. Now Kim Janssen dealt it in for Nedved. Nedved has a man in front. Groshek score! Three to one. The Rangers are back ahead by two. Well, the New York Rangers are beating the New Jersey Devils at their game, folks. They're cycling the puck. They're walking out of the corner. They're using the give and go. The Ranger fans in that bad suit, they're ecstatic right now. This is still a check line. Grosik is on that line now instead of Dvorak. But watch right here. Great move. Nedved, a little saucer pass. Grosik beats his man to the front of the net. Gets a pass from Nedved, who has had a strong game. Look at that little saucer pass right over the stick of Marty Brodeur. What a play. Marty had a stick on the ice, taking that pass away. If that's not off the ice, folks, that's no goal. Great play by Nedved. Great pass, and Groshek puts it through uh, Marty's leg. Great, great work down low by Peter Nedved. 
Oh, man, backhand saucer pass. That's excellent. How impressive a player is Groshek in terms of his reputation? Well, Chicago traded two guys to Buffalo for him, Doug Gilmore and J.P. Dumont. He hasn't excelled with the Rangers yet. He's even been sent to the minors as a wake-up call earlier for the New York Rangers. But he's got all the tools. He's big. He can be abrasive. He can score. Uh, he could be a good player here in New York if he continue to play like that. Bobby Holik and Breland. Holik one hands it to the corner, jostled off by Messier. Healthy collision, and players just now getting back up from. Him. Randy McKay moves over to Breland, shoved off by Kim Janssen. Now Holik moving along half court. Stevens. Scott Stevens tried to cycle it along and get that going, but Dvorak just pitched it away. Thrown back on by Rafalski. The chance now is it's moved back in for a pass to Breland. Breland fed one just away from McKay. And Janssen retrieved for the Rangers. Jostled by McKay. Chance for Holik. He's got a man in front. Fed across the oh, What a save by Hebert. I think he's healthy. I don't think he's hurt. Man, oh man. That was surely 3-2. Hebert was pretty much left alone on that one. And it's kicked around behind. Regaining his stick and playing the puck now is Pirenton. And he lobs it back down. Smart play. Kicked it up to himself. Got a stick. Shot it down the ice. What a save by Guy Bear. Oh. Let's hear from John Saunders and John Davidson. St. Louis waiting to get healthy in Pittsburgh. And Keith Kachuk just stays with this one. And it crawls in. He taps it out of midair. It hits a crossbar. Goes over the line. 3-1 St. Louis. They have outshot the Pittsburgh Penguins 19-4. The score is 3-1. The Penguins are going to have to open it up. Corso with a couple of goals in that one. 10 on the season. Dodge intermission. We'll hear from those gentlemen again. JD's ABC's with Chris Draper. The Avalanche and Kings highlights too. Wrist shot by Niedermeyer. Knocked down in front. And Bear looking around. Didn't know that he had it pinned. Boy, this guy's played an impressive Boy, game. He's faced 24. He's gotten 23, some of which he didn't know he had, but he did. That's why his team's ahead. Sergei Nemchinov try to win the faceoff for New Jersey. Danico wanting to hold it in. Pandolfo pushed it on. McKenzie wanted to hook it to the front. Flexed away, though, by Guy Bear. Coming by, though, is Nemchinov. Devils trailing in the game by two. Their unbeaten string against the Rangers in jeopardy. It's at 23. Here is Danico pivoting on back. Danico dropped it on. Jim McKenzie lugs it ahead. McKenzie wheeling goes for the wrist shot. Off the glove of Bear. Around now for McKenzie. Picked up by Niedermeyer. Wrap around. Flipped away by Bear as he was feathering his stick across, anticipating that. Pandolfo moves to the corner. Wrapped up there by Purinton. Coming by is Niedermeyer again, and they jostle for possession. Purinton has lost his stick as Niedermeyer feeds to the back. Kept by Nemchinov. Floated over, but away from Danico. Drilled into him, and he keeps pressure on. Pandolfo tried to center. McKenzie got there. Banked it around behind Nemchinov. Played it just away from Pandolfo. Here's McKenzie burrowing in. Locked up there with Purinton. They battle it on the wall, and it's Danico flipping one that's nubbed down by Pandolfo and held by Bear. Looked like a tennis ball with a lot of Dobermans in the yard, didn't it? Great Let's line. take a look at the storyline by Max Life. Mogilny, 40th goal. First devil with 40 plus since 91-92. Rangers, two goals in 12 seconds in the second period. Nedved and Graves. Already the Rangers had nothing going at this time until Nedved throws that great wrister right over Marty's glove. A little while later, puck came out to Adam Graves. 12 seconds, as a matter of fact. He throws it, and that beats Marty Baudur on the glove side. So I gave the Rangers a spark, and now they're starting to think they can win this game. Ryan Lease resting at the bench. Graves will try to win this faceoff from Jason Arnett, but Arnett prevailed. Puck back to White. White with a shot, and that one knocked down by Sandy McCarthy. Played back ahead to McCarthy, moving up the wing. Challenge there by White. It's McCarthy moving in, shouldered by White again. Puck taken by Forbes, given out for a shot by Mato. That pinballed off of Sakura. Laid ahead by Elias, but away from Arnett. Loaded back by Smrek and taken once more by Forbes. Forbes for the Rangers, just lobs it in. Sandy McCarthy moves back in and puts the hit on O'Donnell. Now it's White. Ahead for Eliash, but it skipped by him. Turned on by Smrek, but into some trouble. Then floated away past O'Donnell. 
got those two guys on the side blowing up the ice as fast as they can. LS and Sakura, that would scare me as a defenseman. Boy. Slow guys used to scare me doing that much less those two guys. Yeah, you'd want to slow down the oh, replays in the locker man. room that you have to watch the next practice. Well, usually right? I was so far out of the play, the replay couldn't pick up my number. So. <laughs> well, John and John found it a week ago. <laughs> it's a Winnipeg. Yeah. Search the archives. Nothing positive ever found in the archives. You notice that? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Ahead now with this, it's a wrist shot by Groshek that's well wide. Rafalski drops it on into some traffic created by Nedved. And Rafalski able to push a pass on to Breland. Three and a half to go, second period. Breland up the wing for Randy McKay. McKay stalemated there, trying to find it. But it is Janssen. Janssen got the secondary assist with Nedved on the goal by Groshek that gave the Rangers the two-goal lead back. Here's a three on two. It's shaken back over for a shot by Groshek. Turned aside by Brodeur. Centering pass, Alave held by Brodeur. And play stopped. Boy, a little more a stick oh. came in there. It may have been a Ranger stick accidentally clipping a Ranger player on the side of the helmet, but. Well, the Devil's starting to realize they're going to maybe have to scratch and claw to get this win. Ned Bed, Stevens, a little bit of anger there. Two checks coming in, yapping at Stevens, the captain. Not a good, not a good guy to yap at. <laughs> no, there is a way of being paid back for that. Oh, isn't big there? time. Well, tomorrow on ESPN2, National Hockey Night from Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, Capitals and Red Wings. Detroit unbeaten in the last 16 home games. Have not lost at home in calendar year 2001. I think they might be confident. I, yeah, I think they are. I think they are. They're playing great. Well, we've been talking about Patrick Eliash and that line all night long. And uh, there is an argument, and I could certainly buy into this argument, that Patrick Eliash maybe is the best left winger in hockey right now. You look at the numbers, certainly 86 points ahead of all the other left wingers that would challenge him for that honor. Brendan Shanahan right there, plus 39. So that number just jumps out at you. So not only is he doing it at the offensive end, he's not hurting you at the defensive end. He's one of the top plus minus players in the NHL. So uh, it's out there. He's young and he's only going to get better and his team's only going to get better. So you got to start thinking of Patrick Eliash in those, uh, those terms now as one of the best left wingers in hockey. If you filter out all the extra, what is being said between Nedved and Stevens right now? A challenge for next time? What's going on on the scoreboard? Well, I, if I'm Peter Nedved, I don't want to make Scott Stevens very angry. I don't want to make the Devils very angry because they've been pretty placent, uh, complacent this second period. Uh, they're winning 3-1. They get a little anger, get a little emotion, get a little excitement in that Devils game. Two goals is easy to surmount for this team. Here's Elias. Big drive. Hit it off the post. Another post shot by the Arnett line. Now it's Messier giving it behind, and Motto is there. Under three minutes to go in the second period, and the sellout crowd still buzzing from the closeness of that shot. Here is Motto stepping away from Eliash. Motto challenged and run into by Eliash. Messier comes by, but it's given up to Rafalski. Laid it ahead. Sakara saw it go off his stick. Locks up with Leach. The puck pumped along by Hebert. Taken by Arnett. Arnett around behind. Penalty coming up on the Rangers. Fed to the back now for Rafalski. A cluster of players fed across. Gomez a shot. Save Hebert. Another try. Spiked away, and the Rangers are able to touch. And we've got a little more going on. Patrick Eliash and Mike Motto and Jason Arnott and Mark Messier and the snarl has come up heavily in the second period. Well this is going to be interesting because if they call that Eliash and uh, the New York Ranger player, I can't see who it is underneath there right now, uh, if we're fighting, then you got to give somebody uh, the third man in, either Arnott or uh, Mark Messier who came in and jumped on Arnott. Oh, look at Arnott. You're not going to touch my little brother and there's Matt. Oh, Matt! <laughs> this is just supposed to be a nice little walk in the park for the New Jersey Devils today. Well, they, they are not going to go quietly from this. <laughs> oh. The right uppercut by Messier and the wrestle down by the linesman. And I forgot to tell you that along with Elias being the best left winger in hockey, he's also got some guts. This guy goes to traffic areas, he sticks his nose in. Mess is fired up here. Arnett's not very calm about this either. He <laughs> wanted in the worst way to get back to Messier, and it'll be very interesting to see how the penalties are handed out here. Well, Mess saw Arnett give that little left-handed jab uh, to the bottom of that pile. Oh, man. This is good. I like this fire. 
Rangers needed more of this all year long. The Devils need more of this tonight. Oh, yeah, that's leadership, Matt. Oh. Well, this continues. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the ranch. <laughs> that's back at the homestead. There's the captain, one captain, New Jersey, maybe maybe two of the best captains ever in the NHL, Scott Stevens, Mark Messier. It does not mean that they're gone for the day, though no. it might. 2.28 left in the second. They at least got more than a minor out of it, or they would stay. Well, that means you're giving, doing a lot of yapping when Elias gives it the little bird chirp there with the hands. Now let's look at this again. Here's the goal scoring chance. Sakura gets in a foot race with Leach. Okay, Leach has got a penalty for that. The arm was up by the referee. Now the play continues. Elias goes to the front of the net. And that's Model. That's Mike Model with Elias. Stick goes up into Model's face. There, a little left to the jaw. A little cross check. Oh, two left. A little Rudy Poo smack down here. Now there's Arna. He's in there. Now watch Mess come over the top here. Right off the top row. There's Mess coming in, protecting his player model, his young player model. Arna's protecting his young buddy, Eliash. And then all heck broke loose, Mike. Well, Terry Gregson is uh, getting it all written oh. down by number. No, actually, they're trying to figure out how to get away from this uh, arena back onto the interstate, which is just about impossible. <laughs> you go to the turnpike, you take the second road, take a right, you'll end up at the Lincoln Tunnel. You can see it. You can see the interstate. It's just a matter <laughs> of negotiating it. This is going to be interesting. Uh, they both seem both seem pretty happy now. There's no problems yet. Again, it all depends when they call the fighting. If it was five and five with Motto and uh, Elias, you got to think there's going to be a third man in. He'd be explaining it to the two captains, yes. but uh, they were involved earlier or on they've, this most recent one. They've been bad boys. They can't be talked to. But Arnott was the first man in there because Arnott's already in there. Now right over the top, you see Mess coming in. He grabs Arnott right there. And Elias and Motto are still together. Oh, that helps a lot. Not only is that upside down, that's bad writing. Looks like, El oh, Terry will be glad to hear that. <laughs> I, I can read Elias and uh, Motto get fives. Then there's got to be a third man in. If they, it, Still coincidental, Miners, as Ron Lowe waits on Stevens and uh, Nedved. Next Saturday, the last weekend of the regular season, three great matchups. Abs, Red Wings, Penguins, Flyers, Dallas, San Jose, three Eastern, noon Pacific on ABC. Next Saturday, regional action. So check your local listings as we await the meeting out of the penalties. Neither side will be happy, probably. We got war and peace going on down there right now. A lot of a lot of a lot of splaining going on down there. Dean Warren and Terry Gregson, Gregson the veteran referee, has explained it all, and we see a lot of hands being passed by Gregson as he makes that motion, as if to say things have evened up, except for the initial minor that was assessed to Brian Leach. Well, Ronnie Lowe, he's got that expression on his face. I can live with this. I can live with this. Usually in this when the referee goes over and talks to the coach, as long as the coach is calm, you can tell it's going to happen to the other team. Number 33 of New York, Mike Motto, five minutes for fighting. Number two of New York, Brian Leach, two minutes for holding. The Devils, number 25, Jason Arnott, receives five minutes for fighting and a game misconduct. Larry doesn't look too shook. At number 26, Patrick Elias, five minutes for fighting. The penalties come at 17:32. So Arnett is gone with a game misconduct. Well, again, you got to expect this with New Jersey because they are a very close team. Uh, they're going to protect each other, especially that line's going to protect each other. We saw it last year in the playoffs. You remember, Darian Hatcher caught Sakura right on the jaw, knocked him cold. Later in the game, Arnott won the game, won the game in overtime, won the Stanley Cup. And look what they brought out. Matter of fact, Larry Robinson ended up putting Sikora's jersey on. He was in the hospital at the time. So this is a close team. That's why you win. You're a close team. You care about each other. Before they flew back to New Jersey, they took the Stanley Cup over to Sikora. At the hospital, he knew what it was. 
He knew what city he was in, all was well. Didn't he ask the doctor, Doc, can I play the piano after this? <laughs> then he said that's good because I couldn't before. <laughs> Here's McKay onto the back now, Rapolsky, a four on three power play for New Jersey. Rapolsky walks it across and hands to Sikora. At the front of the net is McKay to try and block a Bears vision. To the back, Sikora. Rapolsky with a drive, pad stop, rebound, fed across the net mouth and gathered in by Mogilny. Then on back to Sikora. Rapolsky back to Sikora again. McKay standing right in front of Bear. Ryan Rapolsky moves it. Wrist one in front, McKay a backhander save made by Bear. So they've tried that route now and it hasn't worked. Rapolsky across, big drive by Sikora. And Bear may have gotten a piece of that. With, it was a scorching shot. Here is McKay onto the back, Rapolsky again. Rapolsky creeping in, shoots one that slowed, came to Mogilny, touched it back around to Sikora. Both teams get a man back in 25 seconds. Big drive by Sikora, hit McKay, rebound, score! Mogilny! Well, there's Brian Nietzsche, a very happy camper right now. But again, we've been talking about this New Jersey power play. We've been talking about why it's successful. Yeah, the Mogilneys are great, the Eliashes are great, the Sikoras are great, but they still have those guys that have enough guts to go and stand in front of the net. And that's Randy McKay in this situation. Randy's job is to just hunt down loose pucks and then go right back to the front of the net. Right here, Kolchuk is a cardinal sin. He gets tied up with a man in front. That leaves Mogilny wide open to come in off the side. you got to let Randy McKay know you're there, but you cannot get tied up in front with him. All of a sudden, it becomes a three-on-two instead of a four-on-three. Kolchuk takes himself out of the play. That enables Mogilny to walk in and shoot in the open net. For Mogilny, his 11th power play goal of the year. Leach's holding minor is up. The coincidental minors to the very chatty Peter Nedved and Scott Stevens have about 18 seconds left. And that's a killer because the Rangers would love to have went in three to one instead of three to two. Now all the momentum's with New Jersey. Peter Myers pass blocked a minute and a quarter to go in the second. Messier and Arnott are gone with game misconducts. Niedermeyer cruising on back in. Scott Niedermeyer with a wrist shot kicked out by Amer and sent to the wall by Spreck. Outlet pass is too far for Dvorak. Rodor comes out to play. Swooped it around with a big goal stick to White. Gave it up though to Malhotra. Malhotra trying to stick handle but loses. White has so much faith in his wingers. He just threw that blindly to the point because 99.9% .9 of the time, the Devils have a man there. Leach gives it across to Lovitch. Back for Leach in front. Save Rodor. And the rebound played by Breland. Then followed up by Madden with 35 to go. John Madden leading it in. White headed to the net. Madden spins now and sent one that skipped around behind. Devils in the midst of one last change. 27 left in the period. And on comes Lovitch again. Lovitch got the pass on to Nedved. Shoots and it's struck away by Rodor. Another shot. And that blocked wide by Colin White. Moving in again, Nedved, 15 to go. Dealt it behind, but White is there, jostled off by Halavich, and then it's sent along by Stevens. Fed back to Bobby Holik, seven seconds to go. Nemchinov trying to work his way in, bodied off, but here's Madden, a shot that went wide, and the horn sounds to end an eventful second period. Stevens is involved with Nedved again out there right now, so that's that payback you were talking about. He's letting Nedved know that when he steps on the ice for the next period, he's also trying to get into Nedved's mind right now, trying to bother him for the next period. At the end of the last game played between these two, Stevens and Sandy McCarthy fought. Up next, Dodge Intermission Report, John Saunders, John Davidson, after this quiet break from our local ABC station. Dodge Intermission Report, Devils down by one in the second. They went down by two, a great feed from Peter Nedved to Michael Groshek. But back came the Devils to cut that lead in half. It was Randy McKay jostling in front, Alexander Mogilny cashing in. This is the Dodge Different Intermission Report. John Saunders and John Davidson teaching time now here on ABC. Normally you like to get a player on the ice, this time something a little different. Well, times have changed from the old days when some of us used to play in the National Hockey League, and it has to do with off-ice activities. And Chris Draper, one of the real spark plugs and, and energy guys with the Detroit Red Wings, works out actually during the season with weights and all kinds of different exercises to maintain the energy, he says, that he needs to play hard during the regular season. It wasn't too many years ago, John, that uh, there was no such thing for guys like us. Yeah, once again, <laughs> it's JD's ABCs of hockey. 
Chris, when you when you get into late in the season like this and you're up in the weight room, what do you try to achieve by being in here this time of year? You're maintaining up here. And uh, like today, I, I, I'll do everything. I'll, I'll hit upper and lower body, knowing that I'm like, tomorrow I'm not going to be able to work out because we have an afternoon game on Saturday and Sunday. So you're, you're doing now leg extensions? Yeah. Now, is this, is this <clears throat> excuse me, leg extensions, is this built for the, the the game where you need a whole lot of strength all the way through the game. This machine is is going to be for for the power. I would I would have to say for my game. Obviously, you know, being a smaller player and being a skier, I want to make sure that you know my legs are as strong and powerful as it can be. I have no idea what this is. What is this? Okay, this is uh, this is it's a rowing machine, and what it is, it's going to work. Uh, it's going to work most of your shoulders and get hit a little bit in the back as well. Where would this equate to when you play hockey on the ice? Is this just overall strength or is this battles uh, in the corners? You know, the, the, yeah, exactly. The, with, the way we play is, uh, you know, with myself, Darren, and Kirk, you know, we, we obviously like to cycle and we like to grind her down low. And, uh, you know, that takes a lot of quickness and a lot of power as well. When you get to the bench, how long does it take you to recover? Um, you would probably want to probably want to recover probably in about uh, 20 to 30 seconds. We do a lot of uh, a lot of cardiovascular. Not, I mean, a lot of people think it's just practice and that's it. But you know, nowadays, you know, with the conditioning of, of all the players in the league, you know, guys are doing things before and after practice, and also doing things after games. You know, so the conditioning level is that good, and you can bring your heart rate down that fast. So during a regular season week, you can find Chris Draper in the weight. Where would we find you when you were playing? Oh. In the weight, was, oh. you were in the weight well, room, there, I would assume. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Different type of weights. Yeah. You know, these guys really do, uh, do, do work out hard. The Red Wings practice facility, they actually have a health club above the ice surface, and the players can move on up after they have their workout on the ice, and they all start working out with weights. Then they go in for the massage. That's what you'd like. Gordy Hell might still be playing right now <laughs> if they were using weights back then. This is the Dodge Different Intermission Report. This is the Dodge Different Intermission Report. Here now, John Saunders and John Davidson. Rangers leading New Jersey despite the fact they've been outshot 31-14, to 14, and that doesn't count the fist. That's just the ball. Well, through two periods, I think when you look at the goaltending, obviously Guy Hebert had been better through the two periods than Brodeur. However, now you see the Devils get their adrenaline flow going. This is going to be a very interesting third period. Without Messier, without Arnott, two players who wanted to protect their own teammates I did not like Arnott's little sucker shot when a player couldn't protect himself. And that's why Messier went after him yeah. for the second time. Stevens, though, Scott Stevens has got them uh. riled up. St. Louis against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has dedicated themselves to playing great defense down the rest of the stretch towards the playoffs. In the third period, they better start thinking offense. The shot from the point, Danny Corso picks up his second goal of the game. That gives him 10. He's becoming a real key offensive player for the Blues. Watch Kachuk, number seven, to the net, out of midair, snaps the puck, off the crossbar, over the line. St. Louis leads 3-1, and they have played a nasty game on the road. Pittsburgh's going to have to open it up. Forget that left wing lock now through two periods. They trail by a couple. Blues haven't won in Pittsburgh since November of 1990, and they've won just one of their last 14 on the road. Third period ahead in that one. Red Wings and the Flyers. Great defensive game here, and Roman Czech Monarch does not mind leaving the crease. One of the biggest goaltenders in the game, and you'd think he'd just stay back and use his size. But look at him. I mean, he doesn't stay back. He reads plays. He's very aggressive with his goal stick. And when you do all this stuff, that tells everybody one thing, that you're really confident in yourself, and his confidence level on home ice is real high. We've had 32 shots in the game. Osgood and Czech Monarch have both been perfect. You say you're confident, but from the bench, if you miss that puck and it winds up as a goal. Uh, don't worry about those little things. <laughs> Chick Monarch has nine shutouts this year. Eight of them have come at Philadelphia. Kings and the Avalanche. one nothing already. Ziggy Palfy shorthanded. The kid from Slovakia makes a great move through the legs of both players, Bork and the goaltender, Abishur. Not long after that, Palfy makes it 3 nothing with his second goal. All of those in the first period. The second period... I thought was when the Avalanche would come back and really get it going. No, they did not. Yet, nothing. <laughs> Joseph no. Stumple had the assist on that last Palfi goal. He also got the first goal on the power play. Los Angeles right now started the day one point behind Phoenix. They win this game. They'll advance in that one. And this is an important one at home. And Phoenix plays at home tonight. I think they have San Jose. 
Vancouver is the only home game left for Los Angeles, and then Los Angeles has three uh, other games that they play on the road in Phoenix, Vancouver, and Calgary. They're playing well, but they've got to prove it on the road now. They've played real well on home ice. Potvin has been great in goal for them, even though he has not had to be their best player this afternoon, and that's a good sign, especially against Colorado, who's finishing up a five-game road trip. And tough on Phoenix, watching this game, Ooh, saying, yeah. guys, now we have to win against San Jose. This is the Dodge Different Intermission Report, 3-2 Rangers. The NHL on ABC Sports, brought to you by Chrysler. We're reinventing the passion for driving. And Original Coors, when you're an original, you do it your own way. Original Coors. It is the time of peaceful coexistence, so to speak. At least in the seats it is. Three to two, the Rangers lead going into the third period. Just a marvelous game with everything. Well, Larry Robinson is scared of this game, and with reason. He knows that the Rangers play better against the Devils than they do against anybody else, and he was worried about a letdown from his team. Bottom line is, Guy Bears gave his team a chance to win this game, and now the Rangers got to do the job in the third period. Just underway in the third, no Messier and no Jason Arnott because of game misconducts which occurred in the second. Scott Stevens with a pass, tipped ahead, brought on by Bobby Holik. Work back on now for Pandolfo and drop back in deep. It is Bear flipping one that went by Randy McKay off of Lovage, and Lovage with a good second effort to spike it out on the backhand to center. Stevens shoved it on, Bobby Holik twirled back in. Holik with a drive and a save made by Bear. Now it's McKay. Randy McKay with a man at the front, Pandolfo, crossing, trying to get to the slot, shuttled it off to Holik, another shot, and that deflected toward the McKay corner. Randy McKay went down, so did Lovett. And the Rangers are able to step free with it. And it's drilled back down by Peter Nedved. So the Rangers start the period with an icing. 53 seconds in. Well, we talked about this period and how well Gia Bears played. Bottom line is the uh, New Jersey Devils could have been ahead early. Second period, you see that great wrist shot by Nedved. You see that good quick wrister again on the glove side by Graves. Now Mogilny took over. Great individual effort, great speed. Watch this pass, a saucer backhand pass to Groshek in front. And it's a one-goal game because of this four-on-three situation. Randy McKay didn't get an assist on that goal, but he certainly should have. Yeah, it looked like it glanced off of him. Should get credit for that. If Randy was a 50-goal scorer, he could have stolen, but 20-goal scorers don't steal goals. Breland fakes, shovels one, it's loose in front, scoops back near Breland, but poked aside for Manny Malhotra, who starts it ahead. Brought on now by Dvorak, and it's hooked to the corner by Niedermeyer on defense for New Jersey. Rattled back around Dvorak, centering pass, and a block made by Brodeur. Just throw the puck at the net, and sometimes good things happen. All the time good things happen. 33 shots to 15. Unless you're a goalie. You <laughs> see it exactly that way. Another icing. Joe Micheletti come in from down below. Okay, Doc, thanks very much. You know, New Jersey felt, at least their coaches felt, that their players responded positively when Arnott and Messe and everybody got into it towards the end of that period. They scored a goal after that, so they felt that that maybe, maybe that spurred them on a little bit. The, the other thing that they want to do in this period, they want to shoot the puck low on Guy Bear because we've talked about his groin problems. Shoot the puck low, make them go down, and then go after the rebounds. As far as the Rangers are concerned, they don't want to hold back in this period. They want to try and get the puck in deep and be aggressive on the forecheck and try and keep the puck in New Jersey's end. Right? McCarthy throws it around behind. Thank you, Joe. McCarthy seems capable of playing 30 minutes. He might have to at the rate things are going. He has been one of the more productive guys, even though he's not really figured in the scoring this afternoon. Well, if the New York Rangers try and win this game 3-2, to two, they're going to lose because they're just not good enough defensively, and the New Jersey Devils are going to be attacking. So Joe mentioned that they want to make the puck, uh, get it into the New Jersey end. They want Jersey to have to play a little bit defense. They want to continue to put pressure on Marty Brodeur. You look at 97, folks, uh, it was the last win. Uh, that's 23 games. Uh, again, they're due to win a game, but I'll tell you, you've got to continue to attack Jersey. You can't sit back with too many weapons. Mixed in with that is a playoff run, separate from regular season, in which the Rangers defeated the Devils in five. Adam Graves had an overtime winner, and he's out there now in a four-checking role. That broken by O'Donnell, then run into by McCarthy. Buck worked on ahead now, and in traffic by Smrek, lost it, dropped back, and Leach can shift back. Leach's pass went off Forbes, though. 
So Colin White spirits it ahead to big Jim McKenzie. Lobs it across now for the carry by Madden. Madden lost. A one-goal game. The Rangers ahead. Nemchinov fed one. It went off of O'Donnell. Recovered, though, by Colin White. Handed on to Nemchinov. Nemchinov fed one in front, and it went off Leach and wide. Madden rocked to the boards and glass by Leach. Puck spun loose. McKenzie sealed up there by Smrek, but he just bounces right off. A couple of lacrosse checks to his back from Smrek. Make that five. Here's McKenzie to the back now for White. Shooting, and it's deflected to the glass. It's falling in front was McKenzie. Across cross, cross checks and a basketball pick on that play. Well, he went right to the net, went down. Seems to be fine as a change now takes place. And the puck thrown back down the ice. And the Devils didn't react to it right away. Now they'll get back for the tuck. 17-11 well, to go in the third. We we're talking about the, the last win of the New Jersey Devils, uh, or the last win of the Rangers against the New Jersey Devils. Uh, the biggest win, certainly, by the New Jersey Devils was uh, in 1994. We all remember this series. We are going to win game six. We won't lose game six. Right there, Mess walks into this building, gets a hat trick. Just made that myth of his leadership even bigger. And remember game seven. 32, Stefan Matteau, Esatikin in in front. And again, we know the Rangers went on to win the Stanley Cup that year. Game six was huge. Without it, there would not have been a game seven. The Devils would have won the series. And it looked after game five that the series was over. The Rangers were a pretty flat team after game five. But again, Mess is a leader. Uh, everyone thinks he's one of the best leaders uh, in sports, and uh, he proved it that game. Here is Holik. Wanted to drop it off, but it was just Rangers there to take it, and Nedved moves back. Nedved just did a 360 and swirled one around that Stevens can bunt loose on for Brian Rafalski. Then on for Sikora, but it kicked back to Stevens. Lavich out on the four check for the Rangers, along with Peter Nedved and Michael Groshek. It's ahead to Stevens now, who moves in. Stevens just banks one that is tapped aside by Bear. Swung though to the slot, just away from a couple Devil sticks and back down. Like I said this earlier, this type of game is much better for the Devils than if they walked into this game and won six nothing without having to work. Uh, they got to battle. They got to play good defense. They're in a, a physical contest. The, the Devils' goal is to win the Stanley Cup, so anything that helps them win the Stanley Cup is good for them. And a game like this will do that. Here's Malhotra nudging it ahead and curling on back is Dvorak. Tucks it up to Malhotra, jammed it back in. Michael York has moved up to take the center position, left behind by Messier's game misconduct. But he wanted to set up Malhotra there, and he sure wanted it. Dvorak, a shot deflected in front, glanced off one of the Rangers, and shaken up a bit was York, but he moves back to the front for a pass from Dvorak. Knocked away from Stevens, paddled away by Brodeur. Gotten now by, by Malhotra, and circling with it is Radic Dvorak. Fed one in front, Leach a shot, another shot, oh, and what a save by Brodeur on Malhotra! Around behind Graves, rocked there by Gomez, coming by to get it is Dvorak. Flipped one in front that's knocked down, another spar for it. Into the corner they battle. It is Dvorak working again, trying to jam it to the front. It bounced off the back of the goal, and Dvorak turns with it once more. Hit by Scott Gomez, and the puck forced free for Breland. Nudges it ahead, and here's Mogilny looking for the hat. The big drive, and a headhunter that got the glass. So the next time it'll be low, I would assume. Okay, low to the far side, yep. High inside, low outside. Danico the pass, and on comes John Madden. Madden spins, wipes out, but gets back. Madden still battling and poked it to the corner, where it's grabbed off by Adam Graves and laid back ahead. If you look at that home run toss, that's three times now the career they've tried to break the player loose. They just about worked all three times also. Madden dropped it back in. Pandolfo for that, but Mato and the two of them cancel for the moment. Jammed into traffic by McKay. Tries to break free and does. Wanted to center, but that's denied by Smrek. Now Pandolfo in front for Madden. He's taken out of the play by the checking of Peter Nedved. A three on two. Motto gives back to Nedved with a man breaking McCarthy in the shot. Ring off the post. And back to center. It's Randy McKay back the other way for the Devils. McKay trying to finesse through. Shoved off. Goes to the corner. A glove is lost. Why not? What chaos. Nemchinov a shot that rattled off a Ranger defenseman and went wide. Moving back in is O'Donnell. Around behind McKay. Filtered it back for Nemchinov. Tries to go by, but no sail there from Klocek. White a drive. Save made in front. Rebound poked on back to center, and the Devils will drop back. Nedved's wrist shot, how he shoots it, really seems to cause Marty Brodeur some problems. He scored on one already tonight, and he just rang one off the post, which seemed to fool Marty. Here comes Groshek. Drops to Lovich. Man on the wing.
It was a one goal lead. It might have been two. But the man who has at least that vote for a Vezina trophy came out to stop it. Well, we talked about Peter Nedved's first goal on a great wrist shot. The same thing right here. It's great leverage, and it really seems to bother Marty how he shoots it. Puck hits the post right there. Devils shift from defense to offense from the faceoff, but it is taken over by the Rangers and hooked across by Janssen. Feathered by Groshek, but right to Rapolsky. Bank back. This is Klocek, but that one misfired for Nedved and will go down for an icing. The double shift in uh, Holik on this uh, uh, Arnett Sikora or Sikora Elias line that Arnett is kicked out of the game. So Bobby will be getting lots of ice time. He's also playing with uh, Randy McKay. Now the third period is certainly a turning point in any game. And now uh, if you're looking at these numbers, you'd say that New York does not have a chance because they're 27th in NHL and third uh, period goals differential. New Jersey's third best. Uh, that's a, a 50 point swing there, 50 goal swing in those two numbers. So. But at this time of the year and in playoffs, you can throw all these numbers out the window, Mike. When you have rivalries like this, too, why well you can do that. Started back in 1982 when the Devils first were moved here from Denver, Colorado. Just five miles difference, and so it became an immediate rivalry just because they were close. Follow up now comes from Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer able to angle one back, brought on by Breland. Freeland hands to Gomez, then to Mogilny for a shot off of Hebert. Freeland has his stick piled, spins around, does Mogilny and a shot, and Hebert got a piece of that one too. Do you believe this guy? 35 shots, and he's gotten 33. Held along now for Mogilny. Tipped it around behind. Freeland there went down. Meanwhile, Michael York can bring it back. Connected on to Malhotra. Worked one up the wing that was flexed away by Danico. Pretty good hit on Dvorak that time by Niedermeyer. And Niedermeyer emerges with the puck, though he flipped it right out in front and it kicked across to Gomez. Brought back out by Jay Pandolfo. Pandolfo wanted to wrist it in, could not. Mogilny flings it back in deep. First one in is John Madden. Feeds it to the back. O'Donnell crosses. John O'Donnell able to flip it back on for Madden. Madden is closed off. Into the corner, Pandolfo battles with Forbes. It's McKay. Randy McKay had one that went off a defenseman skate. Pandolfo moves in and is rocked to the glass by Forbes. Pinching along is Colin White, but it's not from him in a two-on-one. Bringing it back is McCarthy with Graves. McCarthy moving in. Score! Sandy McCarthy has struck for the Rangers his 11th of the year on a two-on-one with Graves. And the Rangers have their two-goal lead back. Well, we've both been talking about Sandy McCarthy all game long, how well he's played this year and how well he's played today. Right there, the puck goes around the wall. Good positioning by New York, New Jersey. Model throws it up the wall. Right there, bad pinch by White. Now the two-on-one's created. Sean O'Donnell's back. His job is to not let the pass go across. Fake the shot, throws the goaltender right there. He fakes the shot, freezes Marty, and a great goal. Goes to his backhand and throws it right under Marty's leg. South Swiss Airline goal cam. Let's see what it looks like. Again, freezes the goaltender right there. Marty has to spread the legs, spread the wickets. Yeah, and that's, he looks like Brendan Shanahan on that play, not Sandy McCarthy. Oh, 11th goal of the year for Big Sandy. Time of that at 8.03. Adam Graves turned out to be the decoy up the wing. Quack, 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 quack. <laughs> Thrown back off the skate of Sakura. Lovich gave it across, got it back again. He's got Nedved with him, but it's knocked away by Rafalski on defense. Now Stevens turning, close quarters to Rafalski. It's shoved back up the wing, and Elias brings it on. Elias with Holik, tries for Holik, got the shot away, that was kicked aside by Hebert. Now up with it, Nemchinov. Nemchinov with no one to pass to in front is rocked to the boards by Klocek. Centering attempt by Holik fails. Nemchinov had that one knocked away, and it's Jan Holovic bringing it back for the Rangers. Locks one that's snuffed down by Scott Stevens and drilled back in by Elias. So that's a great trade-off for the New York Rangers. Messier for Arnott. Arnott is a big part of the best line, uh, maybe in the NHL, certainly the best line the Devils have offensively. So they lose the catalyst, they lose the center, a great draw man, a power play man. Uh, Rangers lose Messier, of course. Uh, when Messier was 25, it certainly would have been a different story, but maybe not so much now. Smack the only assist on McCarthy's goal. Let's hear from John Saunders and John Davidson. With the WorldCom great save of the day, Igor Larionov gets robbed by Czech Monarch. 
The big goaltender, whoa, slides across, closes the legs in time. Chuck Monica has 32 wins, 20 at home. He's trying to make it 21. And the Flyers trying to hold on, get that 10th shutout of the year for Chuck Monica. Well, Bear 34 saves. Brodeur faced four in the first period and got them all, 10 in the second. It is Mogilney flicking it back out. In the third, the Devils have outshot the Rangers 5-3. But the Rangers have gotten that two-goal lead back. Dale Purinton played it back in. Danico sent it ahead, kept alive by Purinton. And then Danico sent it back out. It's worked ahead by McKenzie on the wing for Mogilney. Mogilney with a shot that he fanned on as he was defended by Leach. Now it's played back on by Bear and just scaled back out to center. Something the Rangers can do to frustrate the Devils with that two-goal lead on the road. He might that right there is why he shouldn't have the automatic icing. Why? Play was kept alive because of the hustle of, uh, of uh, York. Broder had to play the puck. Play kept going. And in a remarkable turn of events, neither man got hurt. <laughs> Here is Danico. Danico dumping it in. I still have a couple of weeks to work on you on this. Oh, I'm pretty strong with this one. I'm a believer in this. A penalty coming up. McCarthy went down. Niedermeyer as well. And the call is a trip. And it is going to be on the Devils. Sandy McCarthy is coming up with a Gordie Howe hat trick. He's had a goal. He's drawn a penalty. Uh, he's lacking a fight, so that could change. Niedermeyer the trip at 10.07, 9.53 left, and his team shorthanded and down by two. We mentioned Gordy Howe. Happy 73rd birthday to that guy today. Not a boy, Gordy. Gordy Lane, 48. Bob Pulford, 75, all with birthdays on the last day of March. Gordy Lane was a tough yeah. customer. Was he, ever? he was not a nice guy to play against. Here's Leach across. Flung back, Scott Stevens for the shorthanded Devils, and it's whacked back down by Pandolfo. So Leach will drop back. Well, Valuable right. time. The Rangers are going to be very careful on this, that they don't give up any shorthanded chances. Uh, they won't take any chances. Leach on the point. Lovich over for Groshek, who's stoned by Brodeur. Lovich around behind, has Groshek in front, works the outside now. Peter Nedved just holding on to it. Looks across and dealt back in. They play a little catch. Groshek weaving around behind O'Donnell at the front. Two of them locked up. It's Halavich with uh, Nedved breaking onto the back for a shot by Janssen. That is blocked by Sikora, and Sikora can clear. Well, again, the Devils will use some of their offensive players now to kill penalties. Right there, you saw Sikora and Eliash out there. Madden can score a shorthanded goal. Pandolfo can score a shorthanded goal. So the Rangers, again, they're not going to take any chances near the blue line. Offside. 8.50 left in the third and still 58 seconds for the Devils to kill. Tonight on ABC at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, Disclosure, starring Demi Moore and Michael Douglas. I understand, Mr. Melrose, there's filming going on on a slap shot two somewhere in North America. Somewhere in Vancouver, they are going to make a slap shot two. Uh, I've talked to the Hanson brothers uh, in depth about it. They love the project. Uh, they'll be in it again. And you just saw the 100-point seasons. Uh, New York Rangers have had a storied career in New York. We all know that. But the Devils had a pretty good one, a short one, but a good one. Malhotra fed, shot by Lovich, was wide, and chased down by Motto. Now Pandolfo trying to get position on him. Down he goes. Meanwhile, it's Motto able to shift on back for the Rangers, who are down to the last 40 of the power play. Malhotra tripped up at the line by Danico. Pitchfork back along, and it came to center, and a penalty coming up. It'll be on Danico. The call is a trip and a five-on-three for the Rangers. Well, the minute this happened, I, I figured there was a chance this to be called. The man jumped by Kenny, sort of threw out his hip or threw out his knee, and they're going to call that in the NHL all the time. Kenny was uh, caught standing flat-footed. Puck jumps by him right here off the wall, and there's that knee. Anytime that happens now, knee on knees, the NHL are clamping down on. So it certainly wasn't an attempt to injure anything like that, but it certainly was a trip. And, and uh, they're going to call these. They're going to continue to call them in the playoffs. That's what the NHL wants. They want these star offensive players to have a chance to pick up speed in the neutral zone without being hooked and held and, and interfered with. Well, that's been one of the hallmarks of the league this year in terms of skilled players doing well. Shutouts are at a record total, but hat tricks are 
double and almost triple what they were last year. The product's great in the NHL right now. I've loved the product since day one. We're getting goals, we're getting four checking. There's been a lot of good physical play this year. We've had great individual goaltending efforts. Hasha gets another shutout last night, and uh, you still got a 60 goal score and a bunch of 50 goal scores in the NHL. So the product is very good right now for the NHL. Colin White banged it back down. And today's product has been exceptional too. It's had a little bit of everything, snarl, fight. Great goaltending early by Gia Bear. Lots of goal posts and some pretty good popcorn. <laughs> you can always find the best popcorn, like you're unbelievable. Well, this is decent here, it sure is. Leaped back across now to Nedved, laid it back across, and it is kicked back over for Leach. Leach shoveled one in front, trying to connect with Lovich, and that didn't work. Groshek able to feed it to the back and scampering to it to hold. Now is Nedved, first penalty is over. Work to the outside. Lovich there, away from Stevens. The pass is not held in. Offside called, a minute 19 to kill on the second penalty. Well, I've been talking all year long and all night long about the Devils not really having a weakness, but actually, if I was really a nitpicker, I could find a weakness in Larry Robinson's team, and that is they do not beat the top teams in the East very well. You look at that against the top six in the East, which is very surprising because this team doesn't lose any games. Six games under 500, whereas they just kill the rest of the East. They've only lost three games for the rest of the group. Uh, but they do do well against the teams in the West, the top teams in the West. They've hammered Colorado a couple times. They beat St. Louis recently. So uh, they get the job done against the Western teams, but not the Eastern teams. They won't get a crack at the West until the very first part of the month of June if things go well for them. If not, it'll be next season. O'Donnell drills one that came over the mat. I see no reason why things aren't going to go well for this team. Pandolfo brings it in with Niedermeyer. Pandolfo a shot, and it's shrugged high by Hebert, who looks but plenty of blue shirts there to grab it. Worked on by Leach, but cut by Madden. Madden for the Devils cleared it back down. 48 still to go on the Danico minor. And again, the Rangers would love to have scored a goal on that situation. They just didn't want to give up a shorthanded one like right there almost. Rangers having a little trouble getting out of their own end, and so Leach will take over, and that will probably solve the problem. And plus you kill two more minutes off uh, an eight-minute clock. Angled back in by Motto, thrown on by Rafalski, steered out by Sikora to Elias. Elias sized up by Janssen. Elias crosses. Side steps one attempt. Elias just pivoting and laying it back in. 18 to go. Clock continues to move as the Devils make their last change. Along with Barry Melrose and Joe Micheletti, Mike Emmerich from the Meadowlands, where the Devils are trailing the New York Rangers by two. Their streak in jeopardy. Alexander Mogilny with both the goals for New Jersey is taken out of the play by Kim Janssen. Teams are back at full strength. Danico out of the box. 6.20 to go as of now in regulation. Janssen pitched it out of play into the Rangers bench, and play is halted. Let's take a look at the Coors storyline. Didn't have any scoring in the first. We had a lot of scoring in the second and scoring of both kinds with the fists as well. Oh, my, we didn't get any scoring in the first period because of this guy. Guy Pierre was just fantastic. Right here, makes a great save, makes four or five other great saves. Same thing right here. Great passing, but Guy Bear came across, stacked the pass, and he finally got some offensive support by Sandy McCarthy, who was at a great game for the New York Rangers. I love to see the tough guys get rewarded with a goal, Mike. And ice time. He deserves it. This time of year for the Rangers, they just got to play the guys that are trying. Rafalski a shot, and that went wide. Hebert out to get it, and hands it behind for Janssen. Threw it back off, Rafalski able to keep, walks it ahead, Brian Rafalski a shot, and it went wide of the short side. Colin White able to keep play alive, that one went off of Janssen, Burrows in along with McKenzie. Gomez trying to step free, but instead it's Adam Graves defensively for the Rangers, just glassing it back to center. One of the things I love about New Jersey is you walk into this building right now, you don't know if they're winning 4-2 or losing 4-2. They just continue to play the same way, winning or losing. Here's Mogilny stepping free. Mogilny taken out of the play. There'll be a penalty coming up, and with 5.36 left, the Devils will have a power play. Alexander wanted the third one. The defense said no, but the defense will rest for two. That man right there, Larry Robinson, a Hall of Famer. And there's a few players out here today that will be heading to the Hall of Fame. And guess who might be selecting some of those? There's our friend right there, <laughs> Dr. Mike Emmerich. Mike, we congratulate you on being Thank named you. to the 
Hall of Fame Selection Committee along with Al Arbor. Congratulations and well deserved. Thank you very much, Joe. It will be uh, an honor and also interesting. I've been buttering Mike up all show, man. How do you think I've been so nice to him tonight? i got a friend on the panel. If, if history uh, tells that Mr. Melrose is in, you can <laughs> Of me. Here comes Holik moving on. Holik turning it on on this power play to Eliash. Key point in the game for New Jersey. Eliash looking to the front. He's got Sikora at the back. Fed across now for Holik's shot that is pinballed right back and taken on by Sikora. Sikora moving on in. Creeps in. Shot save. Rebound. Another save. Scramble at the front of the net. Cleared. Not out. Bobby Holik able to hold it in. Floats a pass across to Sikora. Sikora looking. And just hold. Some sparring in the front involving McKay. Rapolsky, wrist shot, and it went wide. Around behind, dug out by Elias. Fed one to the back that came to Rapolsky. Halfway through the power play. Puck turned back on now for Holik once more. Holik looks over the traffic as Elias can't get the shot away. Knife away to the point. Sakura shot, save me. Rebound, poked back across by Sakura. Rapolsky hustled to keep it in and did. Now it's Bobby Holik again. He's got Elias side of the net off McKay. It is McKay flipping one to Elias, who's able to close. Gets it to the back, kept alive by Rapolsky. Rapolsky, Richard, score! McKay, deflection, 4-3. Well, I'll tell you, my buddy Randy McKay didn't get an assist on the one goal, uh, McGillney's power play goal. He did all the work in front of the net. He took a heck of a beating on this goal, too, in front of the net. Stood his ground, drew the defenseman, drew the cross checks, drew the hacking and the whacking, and a great pass from Rafalski right here. He's not trying to score, folks. This is a pass to McKay. He just wants to get it by those two tall guys, those two first guys, and Randy makes a good deflection. Elias is there to pick up a little bit of garbage if it uh, is stopped by uh, Gia Bear. Now watch this. He's just throwing it through the traffic, trying to get it to Randy. That's a big time deflection. Oh, man. Great effort in front by Randy McKay. Nice to see him get rewarded. All those battles he took and all those cross checkings he took right there. 12th power play goal, 22nd for McKay, and the Devils are back to within one with four minutes to go as of right now. The boards and glass are still shaking from a collision involving three. Kept alive by White, turned back to the corner. Janssen there, menaced by Pandolfo, the puck kicked back, Nemchin off, out dueled though by McCarthy who goes down and beats it ahead. Lob back in by Colin Forbes who comes to the bench obediently. Niedermeyer played it ahead, Pandolfo trying to take advantage of the change. Pandolfo dropped it back in, Dale Purinton back for this, run into by McKenzie. The battle's still on and McKenzie tried to nudge further. Hooked back along by Niedermeyer and grabbed off though by Radic Dvorak as the Devils make it. Change. Locked ahead by Leach. Brought on by Malhotra. Flip one in front. Michael York able to circle. Dropped it back behind for Malhotra. Had a man in front. Didn't see him in time. Malhotra dropped it back off and it went through Niedermeyer. Now with it is Dvorak. Dvorak run off by Gomez. Feet in front. Oh, and a save by Brodeur on Malhotra. Malhotra still working. Gets it back on for Dvorak with trouble, but he moves. Radek Dvorak drew a couple of Devils and dropped one back. York there locked up by Gomez. York trying to pull free. It's worked to the outside. Malhotra went down on a lean from Gomez. Play continues as Stevens tries to seal it. And we get a stoppage of play. Great shift by the Rangers. That's exactly what they needed. Get the puck in the jersey in, cycle it, get the momentum back to them. There's Randy McKay, 22nd goal this year for a character guy, an assistant captain, a leader. Now watch this. Puck goes back to Rafalski. Now the two Rangers attack Rafalski. He just has to get the puck by those two men. And if it isn't a goal scored, it's going to be a three on two down low. Great, great tip in by Randy. Eight of the 11 losses by one goal this year for the New Jersey Devils. They don't lose often. And when they do lose, it's usually by one goal mark. Well, Patrick Elias and Peter Sikora have their point of game streaks continuing. But the Devils want most out of this is to extend their streak against the Rangers to 24, whether that involves a tie or a win. But right now, it hasn't happened. They're still down by one with just over two and a half left. Bobby Holik tries to find his way through. That one knifed down, but kept alive by Sikora. Rich one in front. It's knocked down by Elias inadvertently and played by the defense. Janssen bangs it back off and taking it as white. The Rangers aren't even forechecking now. That time, they backed all five men up inside the blue line. Gave the New Jersey Devils the blue line. Low check angled that one back down, and there'll be another icing as Colin White gets back to touch it. 2.07 to go. Well, it's not dull, is it? It's not. This has been a great game. 
Man. There's big Colin White, rookie. There's Ronnie Lowe. Happiest teams competing tonight, this time of the year. That's all Ronnie's looking for is just something to be proud of on that bench. And they have played hard. They've been backstopped by a great individual effort by Gia Bear, but Adam Graves scored tonight. Uh, Nedved's been good. He's been fiery. Leach, only defense in the NHL with 20 goals. There's a great leader. Alex McGillney got two tonight, 40 and 41. So, been a lot of milestones reached tonight by these two teams. Well, Madden will try to win it. Looks like directly behind to McGillney, huh? And draws. Draws have been so important, and the Devils have owned all the draws. So, great win there by the Rangers. Rafalski goes back. He and Niedermeyer, the defense now for New Jersey. It's dealt back up the wing, right to Forbes. Has a man in front, and the shot went off of Brodeur. And look who's out, our buddy Sandy McCarthy. So he is getting rewarded with a little bit of ice time here. Why not? Brought ahead by Mogilny. Mogilny punched it back in. We're down to the last minute, 45. Lifted off the glass by Leach, and it pops into the first row. Well, good news is they get a face-off and, and a rest. That'll give them a chance to rest Leach and rest all the other players that Ronnie Lowe wants on the ice. The bad news is that the New Jersey Devils get to rest their offensive players like Sakura and Elias and get them fresh for the next minute and 42 seconds. So, uh, Don't forget next Saturday, three great matchups. Dallas, San Jose, Pittsburgh, Philly, Colorado, Detroit. Three Eastern, noon Pacific on ABC. Regional action, check your local listings. And if you get anything next week like we've gotten this afternoon, you'll get something. And all those games should matter, Mike. If things, uh, Pittsburgh wants to finish a certain spot, everyone wants to be in a certain spot, who you play against, so all those will be important games. Good point. This one squibbed away from Sakura. Dale Purinton in to play that on defense. Purinton able to bank it back off. Colin Forbes after this one. Waltz is in with Niedermeyer, and they cancel, so it skips back from Ogilny. We'll keep an eye on Brodeur, down to the last minute, 22. Rafalski's pass, a diving stop by Niedermeyer to keep play alive, and it does. Elias fed it onto the back, Rafalski there, Rafalski fed one in front, deflected into the high glass by Sakura. Still they battle, Kierenton lifted it along, Rafalski able to keep, Rafalski a shot, it bounced loose off Graves, hustling to this as Sakura locks up there with McCarthy. It trickled on through to Mogilny, a little pass is knifed back to center. Rodeur comes out to handle this, he'll be coming off if the Devils can get possession. Elias tried to play it, could not, the net is empty, Scott Stevens cut this one off, the Devils with six attackers. A pass ahead now to Patrick Elias. Elias dropped it back in gently. Going back to play is Janssen. Janssen turning, lifted one. Kept alive by Niedermeyer, dumped back off of Janssen again. Niedermeyer pinches, still battles along the boards. Took a shiver to the mass, and it's battled for once more by Graves. What a lot of hard work with under half a minute to go. McKay emerges, he's got Mogilny in front, but a good defensive play by Janssen. Now Elias with a shot, that one kicked aside. Played back along again. Elias centered one, and it skipped loose and is sent back down the ice. This will be an icing play. The Devil's striding back. Stevens trying to touch it up, and he does. Well, point three to go, and at least one more face-off. Well, New Jersey couldn't get the puck off the wall, and that's a terrible place to have it because you can't get a scoring chance. And also, the Rangers did a good job of plugging up the middle of the rink so that when they finally could make a play, it hit about three skates. Marty moved the puck up the ice and got to the bench. Very smart play. But uh, the Rangers did a good job there. Kept them on the outsides, uh, kept them under pressure, didn't give them time, and, and worked very hard. So, uh, Gia Bear has still got 12.3 seconds, and again, New Jersey's been great on draws in the New York Ranger end zone. I think we might get a timeout here to plot some strategy. Hasn't been called yet. Jersey just called one. He's letting the New York Rangers know that New Jersey so the, the Devils have taken the timeout. Olik and Rafalski and McKay will be among the players that will be out for the last faceoff perhaps in the game with 12.3 to go. Well, Mike, I think everyone in, in the hockey world knows it's been a very tough year for the New York Rangers, but it, it even gets tougher because as bad as they've been and as, as much as they've struggled, they haven't struggled enough to get into the bottom five teams. The bottom five teams all are in the lottery. That means that their names are put in a, in a, a drum and you're picked, and the, the, the team that uh, is picked first gets the first pick overall, and this year it's going to be probably Jason Spezza, uh, a great young player uh, with the Windsor Spitfires in, w, in the uh, OHL. Uh, there's also a great young Russian player. Uh, so the New York Rangers are going to get a high pick, but they're not going to be right now in a position to get one of the lottery picks, uh, so they can't get the big-time stars, and really that's how Pittsburgh ended up getting a Mario Lemieux. Glenn Sather said of last Saturday's game against Detroit, it was an embarrassment. The year has been, it will not continue. 
No, you know Glenn's not going to stand pat. And again, we mentioned last week, this team has money. Uh, there's a lot of great free agents out there. They've got some good young players we've talked about tonight. And uh, i got to think they're going to end up with one of the premier free agents, Sackick, Blake, uh, uh, LeClaire, somebody like that. Well, again, New Jersey's been winning draws all night long. Halik's a great draw man. We'll see if he can do it clean back here to Socorro. Ned Bed will take the draw for the Rangers. It popped to the corner. Leach wheels it. Sakura able to keep down to the last seven seconds. Battled for again. Puck came loose. Sakura pumped it along. Bobby Holik there trying to center. Down to the last one second. And the option shot off the outside of the goal. And the game is over. The streak is over, but the action is not. Fire. We got some hatred down there, some dislike. Guillaume Bear won this game for the New York Rangers early in the first period. The Devils could have easily won this game 5-0 in the first period. Bear hugs are being <laughs> applied, and a lot of it with some venom. They won't meet again until next season, but if those games are like this one, they will be eventful too. First win against the Devils in the regular season since January 12th of 97. Final score, 4-3. More after this. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed your game. Time now for some bonus covers. St. Louis had a 3-1 lead at Pittsburgh. Mario Lemieux with a terrific rush and a great move. Yager scores to tie the game at 3-3. Right now, Pittsburgh on a power play. Let's go for some bonus coverage to Gary Thorne and Bill Clement.